Hi, JJ. How are you? I've been better. Well, let me ask you a question. <laughs> you, ever, you ever have any issues before with your your furnace or your heating system at all in your home? Yep. It's a pain in the dick, isn't it? Yep, that it is. Well, I know somebody that people can call here in the capital region in New York State. That'll help them out when they have issues with their heating system or their furnace or their boiler. That's our friends at Johnstone Supply in Troy. That's right. They're ready to help you. The temperatures, they've been dipping below zero at nights recently. We've barely been hitting the 20s for highs in, during the afternoons. It's now more important than ever to make sure your furnace or boiler is ready to handle the extra workload on the way throughout the rest of the winter. Plus, I mean, you got to make sure you tell your family, friends, and everyone – at the place to call is Johnstone Supply in Troy, 518-272-5922. The crew over there at 6th Avenue in Troy, they'll give you the advice you need to get out of that dilemma and figure out the best solution for you. If you already know that you must make a change this winter, Johnstone Supply has got new high-efficient Goodman furnaces and Navy and boilers. So make sure you stop in, say hi to the boys over at 6th Avenue in Troy to learn more about all that, whether it be Tom, Kevin, James, or Rob. Let them know you heard from our from your friends over at Godzilla Media on White Heat, you heard from Brian and JJ, and they'll take care of you real well. Real, really, really well. That's right. And again, the phone number 518-272-5922, Johnstone Supply in Troy. And all that being said, welcome to episode 34 of White Heat. Ooh, I gave you the macho fingers a little bit. <laughs> I'm Brian Katie. That's JJ Alexander. I know. I wasn't trying to do a good macho man impression. Fuck off. Um Yeah. That all being said, uh, uh, a quicker turnaround than usual for us from one show to another, but there is a lot to get into today. Obviously, we're going to wrap things up with previewing this coming weekend's Royal Rumble as this is five days out. It's Monday, January 24th as we're recording this. The Rumble's on the 29th this Saturday in St. Louis. Um, by the way, funny thing, um, it, which made me think of Royal Rumble over the weekend. I was looking at TikTok. Not wrestling TikTok. I, I was, um, I was just scrolling through random shit on TikTok, and there was this one chick. Oh no, it was accidentally wrestling TikTok, but not really wrestling TikTok. Quinn McKay from oh. Ring of Honor. Yeah. So she was. I can't remember what state she said she was born in, but she grew up in Missouri. Mm -hmm. So she did a little TikTok, um, basically uh, trolling people who call it who. Uh, when they hear her say uh, that she's from Missouri, she Missouri? was trolling people. Yes. She was trolling people that call it Missouri. She's like, it's not Missouri, motherfuckers. It's Missouri. So that was kind of funny. Any hooser. Um, yeah. The road to WrestleMania officially starts on Saturday. And we're going to dive deep into that. But first, <sighs> well, how should I put this? Um, so a little issue happened last week. Yeah. Um, so on Friday, yes. So Friday, there were, there was a participant in the scheduled fourth match of the six match card New Japan was going to have at Cork and Hall. Or excuse me, on uh, the 20th. So that was Thursday, the 20th. So one of the participants that was scheduled for the match presented with a high temperature. And in accordance with their protocols, um, that wrestler and all six participants for that match were removed from the next day's card on Friday. So basically they were there Thursday. And then for Friday, they're like, no, no, you stay home. You stay home. <laughs> Um, now what's interesting about this is that, and I actually applaud them on this because HIPAA is a strange thing. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and there seems to be a lot of gray, like a lot of shades of gray that people create when it comes to HIPAA. Um, especially in, in sports because you have because even if somebody doesn't test positive 
like there's still public announcements of athletes being out for protocols, even if they haven't been tested positive. They're like it might have been a close contact thing, so they're sitting out a couple of days being tested, and then they test negative, boom, they're right back. Even more so, so in countries where HIPAA doesn't exist. Right. Um, but like in sports, sports is a little different than pro wrestling because in sports, Vegas, baby, betting. I mean, that's that's mm-hmm. the that's really the big reason any of those names really come out to be yeah. different. You know, they're basically treating it just like you would with injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, pro wrestling is a little different because um, it's kind of a company to company wrestler wrestler kind of thing where. You know, some companies like WWE, they're very forward, like, hey, this is what happened. I don't necessarily say that they tested positive, but they'll just kind of leave it in a general thing and leave it on the wrestler if they want to publicize if they tested positive or if it's just a protocol situation. Um, So with New Japan, they chose to not release any names as far as who the wrestler was specifically that had the high temperature. Um, but if you compare and contrast, if you compare the matches that were originally booked from that Friday night card and then look at the restructured card, you can probably figure it out. Um, that being said, though, it's still a very hush hush thing as far as nobody saying specifically who that one person was, and that one person has not come out publicly themselves and said that. But it has led to a follow up that was announced today by New Japan. That they are going to, they have ca- they have canceled three of the four events they had remaining in January, which included tomorrow in Fukushima, Saturday night Cork and Hall, Sunday in Ibaraki, and then they postponed their show originally scheduled for this coming Friday in Aichi, and they moved that to mid-April. So basically, New Japan is on shutdown right now for basically two weeks. What it boils down to. And they are scheduled to return to live touring on February the 6th, which, if my math is correct, is a, a week from Sunday? Yeah. Yes. Yes, because the 31st is next Monday. So so a week – so basically uh, two weeks from now, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, so, so here, here's my question for you as a promoter. Hypothetically, let's say you're in – New Japan situation. And it's a situation where you have a wrestler exhibit potential symptoms of COVID, but there's no positive test. Now, again, they haven't released if there was a positive test or not, but let's just hypothetically say there's no positive test for that wrestler. Okay. Would you still go about the same protocols that they've gone with as far as canceling slash postponing your last week of shows, your week, your shows for the last week of January and set yourself back until the first weekend of February. With the state of the pandemic, it currently is. Absolutely. It's you're, you're, you're in, uh, you're, you're far more into the better safe than sorry territory right now than ever. Um, You don't want to risk having, you know, it's this is one of those things where all it takes is one person to be infected to spread it through your whole locker room, and then you're screwed for God knows how long. So it's better to just lock down for two weeks and see how it pans out because two weeks is enough. Where even if everyone you had on that card tested positive, usually symptoms will go away in five to ten days, and therefore you be when you resume, everyone should be on the up and up. Yeah, see, I'm. So this is coming from somebody who has had uh, one or two COVID potential COVID scares in my household. Luckily enough, nobody has tested positive, but there's been because I'll just let me just put everything out in front. So my wife is a. Uh, office manager slash receptionist slash jack of all well Jill of all trades mm-hmm. um, at a primary care office. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's always patients getting tested and such so on and so forth. But right. um, but 
there was a certain positive test in the last week that gave us a little bit of a scare, but we both tested, both came back negative. Mm-hmm. Also, it, a number of weeks prior to that, um, my brother uh, works for a uh, a heating an, an HVAC company that I will not name on the show for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, but he works for them and had a coworker that was on a job with him that came down with symptoms. Um, and to be safe, he came home, got yeah. tested. He came back negative, so we were fine. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's one of those things where I'm not sure people, if they haven't had experiences like that yet through COVID, mm-hmm. um, they don't completely understand or grasp the yeah. the mentality that exists when that happens. Uh-huh. So I feel like in the case of New Japan, I will in the case of anything health related, especially with regards to COVID, I will oh I would always live by the the phrase better safe than sorry. A hundred percent hundred and ten percent of the time I would live by that statement. So New uh-huh. Japan, in my opinion, making the right call because at this point now it gives you time to not just clear these six guys that you had taken off the card, but you now allow mm-hmm. these other 20, 30, 40 talents and your backstage personnel and so on and so forth, allow them to get checked, rest up if necessary, and come back with a fresh slate for the beginning of, of February. Mm-hmm. So, Plus you me, got time I, for Okada to travel over here for the Rumble. <laughs> You sicko. You sicko. I can't believe you actually believe that. Um, I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just giving a what if. <laughs> right. Now, this brings me to another side of it. This brings me to the American side of this with New Japan Strong. This is something I just brought up to you before we started uh, the recording of the show. So mm-hmm. this actually involves AEW as well. So, Mm -hmm. this past week on Dynamite, Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta did a, now I'm not sure if it was a pre-tape or a live, but it was like a short 30-second thing Mm -hmm. where Rocky essentially did all the talking and Mm -hmm. said that there was going to be a Rapongi Vice one-night reunion with him and Trent Mm -hmm. For Friday night on Rampage against, I believe they were booked against the box, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, come Friday morning, it's announced by AEW that Rocky can't work the show because of COVID. Which, and they end up replacing him with, I. I don't remember who replaced him on the card. It was one of the Pudding Gang. I was going to say, I want to say it was Pockets. I think it was Orange Cassidy who, who stepped yeah. in for the match. So, and then Rocky ended up tweeting himself that day, um, apologizing they couldn't be at the show and whatever. But here's the fucked up thing. This weekend, Rocky Romero was in a six-man tag but Taylor Rust and Fred Rosser against Team Filthy at a New Japan Strong event. So he was able to do whatever promo he did, pre tape or otherwise, Wednesday night. Couldn't make the show because of COVID on Friday, but could make and wrestle in a show Sunday night for New Japan Strong. I. I got nothing. The only thing nothing I can to- possibly think of, the only th- there, there's two tr- there's two trains of thought on this. Either that pre-tape was done a week ago, and he was still he tested for positive for COVID sometime right after that, and was not cleared to be at Rampage because Rampage was taped live this past week, right? But then cl- was clear on Saturday, so showed up at New Japan Strong. Or 
he just there was some bullshit reason he couldn't be at the live rampage, whether it be flight issue or something like that. So he didn't show up there. And they just said it was COVID because everyone's got COVID lately. Which I'll Which bring is a possible, fucking terrible. <laughs> I'll bring a possible option C to the table as well in a second. But hypothetically, let's say option A is correct. Why mm-hmm. bother showing the fucking pre tape then? Because one would assume <laughs> that if he tests, one would assume that if Rocky tests positive on, say, the previous Saturday, Sunday, or even Monday, right. Motherfucker would have told you by Wednesday night so that you don't air the stupid fucking pre-tape. Like, <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Like, common fucking sense. Why air the pre-tape in that case? But it's, I'll give you a possible, AEW, dude. I'll also give you a possible option C that you haven't mentioned that I think is could might be slightly overlooked. We discussed on this show the bitter relationship that these two companies have ended up having. Yeah. Is it possible yeah. New Japan stepped in and said, Rocky, fuck them. Uh-huh. That's Just, a big possibility. Like, I, I, again, I mean, this is this is a case of we want, like, I, I really think this is a case of, I think, where New Japan and this, this specific situation is what really is putting my attendance up. I really think now New Japan wants to distance themselves from AEW at this point. Yeah. Because because I think honestly they're being treated better even though it's a how should I put this? Even though the product isn't as isn't in front of as many eyes, I feel like they're being treated better by Scott Demore and Impact. Than they Mm -hmm. ever did by Tony and AEW. Yeah. Plus, I feel like, and maybe this is too forward thinking of me, there's also the possibility of New Japan wanting to um, basically start living by a policy of don't shit where you eat because they have had some talents go to WWE at certain points. Yeah. So maybe they... It's one of those things where, okay, we experimented, it was fun for a little while, but we're done, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, that it, it could also be the reason they're working with Impact and have decided to cut ties with AEW is they could very well be trying to get back on access. Maybe. It's very possible, which I would love as long as yeah. I can uh, – Buy that channel into my cable package for another whatever five ninety nine a month, which is fine by me. I don't give a it shit. It comes basic with my sling. <laughs> Must be nice. Although maybe <laughs> is access I don't, is access on Hulu at all? No, that's unfortunate. Shit. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to look in the sling instead. I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <sighs> um. Yeah. So that's that. Um, I'm trying to find because I know MLW had, didn't they just have their Dallas show this past weekend too? Oh shit, they did. I completely forgot. Yeah, they did. I'm trying to find. Because that's the reason why GCW had the fucking show on Hammerstein, the Hammerstein show on Sunday was because fight was already showing the fucking MLW show on Saturday. Well, let's just uh, let's just do this then. So I have since I just pulled this up. So MLW um, I don't have anything directly in front of me from the show in Dallas, but I can tell you they have announced when Davey Richards uh, that Dave Richards is going to challenge Alex Hammerstone for the world title. And that's going to be next month when they do their show in Charlotte. Super fight. Here we go. I've got it. Yeah, the fucking Blood and Thunder. Okay. Okay, yeah, I got it here. So, yeah. So, that, that's, that makes sense. Uh, da, da, da. Anywhere up the, the false count anywhere fucking championship match was before intermission. What? 
yeah, the main event was a fucking tag team ladder match for the fuck. No, the fucking the the main event was fucking Jacob Kruger or Jacob versus uh, Fat Two versus Matt Kruger. Huh. I'm looking at the results. Unless fucking everything after intermission was just tapings for Fusion, and that's how they're gonna air it. But I mean, still like. And Blood and Thunder was like all that got aired or the, all that's going to air for that friggin' show. But yeah, because King Martez defeated Richard Holiday. Uh, Alex Kane defended the Open Way Championship against Calvin Tankin, Tankman successfully. EJ and Duca had an open challenge. It was entered by Yakuro Kwan and EJ squashed him. Davy Richards defeated ACH. Uh, Aramis El Dragon and Microman defeated RS Gino Medina and Mino Obismo Negro. And then falls down anywhere. Hammerstone defeated El Pagano. Then after intermission, the Saido brothers defeated Bud Heavy and Gnarls Garvin. Uh, DJP defeated Buddy Matthews. <laughs> Great. So you bring in Buddy Matthews and you have him job to fucking TJP. Um, middleweight championship. Myron Reed got the, got the championship back in a match with Bandito, Matt Cross, and Tajiri. So I guess that whole experiment with all Japan is over. Mm-hmm. 5150 defeated Los Parks to uh, have the tag titles. Miranda Gordy defeated Roxy. Jacob Fatu defeated Matt Kruger. Wow. That's underwhelming. Is Miranda Gordy. Terry Gordy's daughter. Well, that's not the. I knew that. I, that's not the question oh. I was going to ask. I was, I, I was like, I had the question in my head, and then I was thinking about rephrasing it when I was halfway through the question. That's my bad. Um, okay. Is Miranda Gordy possibly on the radar for WWE? Not this early. Because she's, she's only been in business green. for what? I was going to say she's only been in business for what, like two years? I think. If that. Is there any female talent you think is on the radar right now? Not just for Roxy. not for Rumble. You think Roxy, Roxy is possibly. already? Not for the Rumble, but to bring into NXT. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I was going to say not just. I'm not talking about for the Rumble match. I mean, like as like a contract. Yeah, Roxy. Um, depending on the depending on the relationship with Impact, if they don't do something to swipe up Jordan Grace, they're fucking stupid. Amen. That's all I can really think I'm of right only now. Mentioned, I know they'll no, never touch Jessica Havoc, unfortunately. I'm only going to mention w- this name because almost everything I fucking see right now is wow this, wow that, wow this, wow that. Like, I don't know why, but I've been seeing ads for wow all over the fucking place for the last five days. Uh-huh. Yeah, because they're trying to bring it back, but they don't have anything for it. Does anybody even think about touching Tessa Blanchard with a 15-foot nope. pole? Nope. That's the whole thing. Is there? There's ads out for WoW, but they have nothing taped. They have no event. All that's attached to it is Tessa Blanchard. That's it. And Jeannie Buss and AJ Lee. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's it. And AJ Lee's only going to be there as an announcer. Well, for now. We'll see. I was I was reading an article about how like they're trying to like get word up and everything, but they have no TV deal and they have like no roster and all this shit and like literally they're just hanging their entire hat on Tessa Blanchard. You know, it'd be funny. Like her fucking play project. You know, it'd be funny as fuck right now. What? And we'll get into this more later, obviously. But I just thought of this. How much of a fuck you this would be. Because everybody's talking about potential surprise entrance for the Rumble. Everybody who's anybody has a hard on for Paige being in the Rumble for whatever fucking reason. Even though she has a fucked up neck still. Whatever. Because well, she, she's kind of um, like, she might be cleared soon. That's why. I think Paige is more of a hard on to want to come back as an on-screen character, but not as a wrestler. But that's whatever. Yeah. If 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 pe- if people are reading into what she's been saying on social media correctly, they they'd realize that that yeah. I think she has yeah. more of a hard on to be on screen again because yeah. she sees what they've done with Sonya. Yeah, like she sees the potential that could have been there, and now she wants back in because of that. Right. Um, right. 
how much of a fuck you would it be if, and I'm not saying this could happen, but it would be a funny fuck you if all of a sudden, um, let's say number 24 goes off, like the, the clock goes off for number 24 in the Women's Rumble, and all of a sudden you hear, light it up! And AJ Lee comes fucking rocket skipping out. Uh, How much of a fuck you would that be by Vince? I would be a huge fuck you, and it would never happen. <laughs> Ain't going to be hearing well, robot know, unicorn attack coming out of them speakers. Well, you got to remember, okay? It wasn't AJ who left on bad terms. I know. I know, I know she's married to somebody who left on bad. Well, not necessarily yeah. bad terms, but like. Well, that was bad terms. Oh, it became more bad, more so bad terms after he left when he went on Cole Cabana's podcast. Right. That's where it really became bad terms. <laughs> um, I never I saw mean, anything oh. in her, anyways. So you're asking the wrong person. Well, but I'm just saying, like for complete <laughs> fuck you purposes, that would be fucking amazing if you ask me. I thought I, it, it's not going to happen. I'm just saying, from a fuck you perspective. That'd be the biggest fuck you Vince could send right now, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Hammerstone, Davy Richards, February 26th. Um, they haven't released anything else about the card, because why would they? Charlotte's a month away. Um, but that's... Plus, God knows if they're going to be able to foot the bill for it at this point. <sighs> or God knows COVID, you know? That's true. Like, like that's... Because that's... A, that's a, isn't it sad that I'm at the point now where if you're not named WWE... And I see you announce bookings for a month out. I'm basically like, yeah, we'll see. COVID. You know, that, that's where I'm at right now. Dude, that's where I'm at. That's why I haven't been able to fucking book a show in a fucking year and a half. <laughs> Love you. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. Trust me. You're not the only one that's frustrated. It's okay. Um, all right. So now we get into Impact Wrestling. Um, which will then circle us directly into last night's House of Horrors. Um, so before the show even fucking starts, um, they have that before the Impact show that they stream on YouTube and Facebook, which is the purpose of the digital media title. So Jordan Grace defended it against Lady Frost, successfully defended it, and I'm pretty sure I told you this when it happened. Guess who the fuck came out to challenge Jordan Grace for a title shot? Who? Oh, oh, come oh, on. Fucking, I it was fucking uh, de, fuck, de, 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 uh, Chelsea Green. No. Um, the other one. The other sex. No, the other sex. Oh, fucking Cardona? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, because, you know, he's the former forever internet champion of the world, so why not go to the digital media title? Um, so then Axis started. Tasha Steeles beats Chelsea Green in the opening match. That's interesting. Um, by the way, they had Mickey James do commentary with uh, the artist for what we as Tom Phillips for this show. Because they're playing the whole D'Lo still recovering from his attack the week before by Ring of Honor. Um, yeah. Oh, those are the spoilers from the next taping. Never mind. I was. I oh, pulled, did I it? Something wrong. Oh, and, and Tasha. Tasha's the ultimate X winner, which would also explain why Mickey would be out there for that match specifically. By the way. Um, yeah. And then Cardona had a backstage interview where he officially announced his challenge for Jordan Grace. Who gives a fuck, Zach? Um, sorry, Matt, my bad. Um, Dashwood and Madison Rain facing Decay and beating them. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh well, no, they didn't, they didn't face Decay. They faced Havoc. It was a handicap match. They faced Havoc. Like, what? 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 what oh, yeah, what? they attacked Rosemary before the match. Oh, right, 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 right. Um... Oh, you're going to love that next match. And then, well, before we even get to that, so they have this tease going on for the quintessential diva. If that's not Taya Valkyrie, then fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, it, if it's anyone other than Taya Valkyrie, Impact should go fuck itself. That's basically where I'm at with that. Because there's, 
Like, if you're going to, like, first of all, I'm shocked they knew how to spell that fucking word, quintessential. <laughs> Second of all, there's nobody on the market that you would possibly use that phrasing for other than Taya Valkyrie. Nobody. So if it's not if 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 you put that tease together and it turns out you've got fucking I'm trying to think of anyone. No offense to her, and I'm just naming a random the first woman that came to my head that's not a play by impact right now. If you did that that teasing for the quintessential diva and you have fucking Willow Nightingale walk out, love you, Willow. This isn't anything against you. It's well, if it's not her and not Yeah. <laughs> I'm just just saying. Right. Um. So Ace Austin, uh, they do a segment where Ace Austin tries to become Mike Bailey's friend. Who cares? Oh my Jesus! Fuck. <laughs> so let me get this straight. Hold on. I thought booking at AEW was bad. They had handicap matches, back to back matches. Yes, they did. Scott, what the fuck? <laughs> and then to make matters worse, the the, the second handicap match. I'd say that the, you're gonna call me crazy. I think the talents in this second handicap match are worse than the talents that were in the women's one. I agree. W. Morrissey beating Zicky Dice and VSK. Like, yep. fuck off. <sighs> Like, and this is the whole thing I don't get about that whole fucking angle is because Brian Myers is doing this whole learning tree thing, which I've already said I hate that fucking term. Right. It makes sense for VSK to be there because he was one of the fucking Creator Pro fucking students. Right. So he trained under fucking Cardona and Myers. It makes sense. Zicky Dice is like 45 and is a piece of shit. I don't know, man. And then after the match, D- Scott Demore makes it official that Kaz is uh, Morrissey, whatever the fuck. His Twitter handle is still Kaz, and I, I know whatever. That's fucking stupid. Um, he's going to get a singles match against Moose for the title at No Surrender next month. Yep. And then Morrissey gets jumped by Taven, Vinny, Bennett, PCO, and Maria. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Oh no! Sorry, they didn't jump him, but they they had tickets apparently. Yeah. They had tickets to watch Gresham beat Macklin in a for the ROH World Title. Zicky Dice is in a fucking band. Are you kidding me? I hope you're not telling the truth there. He is the lead singer of the rock band Heart to Heart. Something tells me I've heard of that band before. I don't know why. Anyways, um, so then after the ROH title match, the ROH group leaves. Yeah. And then I'm telling you, the big swerve is going to be Eddie Edwards as one of them. So wait, what? So what? 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 Why? What? What the fuck? <sighs> My brain hurts. What? During and Gallows versus Rhino and Heath? Yes. What, yeah. like, what, what, what? Because the good How brothers have a business deal. It's because the it's because the good brothers have a business deal with Violent by Design currently going. So this is a way. Pro, fucking Anderson's probably hurt or fucking like living in a fucking trash can because his fucking hot Asian wife took him for everything he's worth because he cheated on her. Um. So fucking, so they're they're they had so that it was figure you have fucking the two bigger guys and it fucking team up for a fucking tandem. Anyways, the one thing that didn't make sense in this is that Rhino played Ricky Morton in this match. That's what made no sense. Well, right, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um. So after that, we had Charlie Haas concuss himself against Josh Alexander. Um, yeah. And then after yeah, the Charlie match, Haas is skinny as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Holy like, he shit! He does not just, look healthy. He doesn't look like Charlie Haas. 
I mean, he looked like um, Charlie Haas, but he looks like old Charlie Haas. Right. You know what I meant. Um, so after the match, that's okay. That's when the Ring of Honor peeps came out. Uh, they came out to attack Haas and Alexander. And then Rich Swan, William Mack, Heath, Rhino, Eddie Edwards, and Chris Saban made the save. Because, you know, they need six people to save a four person attack. That makes fucking mm-hmm. sense. Um, yeah. And that's how the show went off the air. But Maria Canell is saying, fucking cutting an awful promo and saying that the stable is called Honor No More. God almighty. Because, you know, we don't have anything creative to call them. Let's just rip off the Ring of Honor name and fucking call it Honor No More. Because fuck it, right? All right. Be called, no, they should just be called No More Contract because they're obviously not going back to Ring of Honor. Either. Right. Um. Okay. So there was a show last night in Hammerstein Ballroom. Sold out. <laughs> um. I did not run this banner by you that I'm about to put on the YouTube video for this segment. But it's my general feeling about the show last night. To me. GCW did not stand for Game Changer Wrestling last night. You want to know what stand for for me? Garbage Championship Wrestling. Close. Very close. Garbage Championship Wrestling. <laughs> um, now, this isn't me shitting on the general ideology of GCW. Mm-hmm. This is me specifically shitting on the presentation that they put on last night on Fight TV from Hammerstein Ballroom. Mm -hmm. I have grown to accept and somewhat understand deathmatch wrestling for the sake of the fact that I love and respect Matt Tremont almost as much as you do. So, Mm -hmm. um, But last night was not deathmatch wrestling because they were in New York. Correct. But (laughs) what instead what they decided to do was put on was emulate what it <laughs> What they basically, yeah, they, they essentially took it was, you know what it was? It was almost like an indie riffic homage to ECW. Yeah. And when I say indie riffic, I mean a poorly executed homage to ECW. Yes. So, number one, you have a dude trying to... So, basically, I, I, I don't understand why this spot was attempted by this specific dude. But the opening match was a grab-the-brass-ring ladder match, I think is what they called it. Yeah. Um, well, that was the opener leader. on the pay-per-view. There were two pre-show matches. Right. That's what I meant. They were, it was the opening for the pay-per-view. Yeah. It was, And Leo Rush was originally scheduled for that match, but Jonathan Gresham couldn't make the booking to face Blake Christian, a.k.a. Right. the guy used to be known as Trey Baxter in NXT. So yeah. Leo was pulled from the ladder match and put in the Blake Christian match, and they replaced Leo Rush with... Uh, fuck's his name. I saw the name earlier today. Um, oh, oh, right, because they had a battle royal in the pre-show match, and they had a scramble match. That were both sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon because that's just very hick of them. Um, yeah. Who was the guy? Uh, I think it was G Raver who replaced him. It was advertised I think, really did I, show. Rush was oh, we call Blake Christian. I, AJ Gray. I think, AJ Gray was, uh, was, oh, was the replacement. G Raver was already okay. in the match. Yeah. Okay. So it, that's what right. do you call it? It was G Raver, Tony Depp, and Alex Cologne, PCO, Jimmy Lloyd, jo- Jordan Oliver, and they replaced. Leo AJ Gray, Gray, that's right, because he's the ex- and he's the extreme champion. All right, so they put him. So at some point, um, I can't find the name of the person who tried doing this. Um, so one of the dudes in this match, there was a ladder, a closed up ladder. I, I can tell you, it was, it was either it was either Jimmy Lloyd or Alex Colon. Okay. So it was a closed-up ladder perched against one of the corners. 
This dude had a ladder opened up outside the ring up against that corner, that same corner where there was a closed up ladder. And then there was a dude laying in the middle, relatively the middle of the ring. So this dude wanted to try and execute a move where he climbed up the ladder outside the ring. And I think the goal, think being the operative word here, was to either jump over or somehow around the ladder that was in the ring, propped up against the corner he was in, to hit whatever move on the dude laying in the ring. Yeah. Fight TV decided to put out a clip of this specific move in the match on their Twitter feed. And boy, was the room laughing out loud at Fight TV for post this because what ends up happening is this schmuck instead tried to do the half-assed version of the move by trying to one foot hop off the ladder onto the top rope next to the propped up ladder and then do the move. Instead, ends up over jumping the rope so he can't balance it with his left foot and just falls face first into the mat like a good five feet away from the dude. Oh, my apologies, it was AJ Gray. <laughs> so it was just one of the participants in the match. It was their fucking extreme champion doing this. That's extreme, baby. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to find Fight TV on Twitter. Just retweet the and shit scroll, you sent me earlier. Just scroll to the very beginning of their their live tweets from the show. You'll find it's like an eight second clip. You can't fucking miss it. And then go look through the replies to the clip. I just just bro, why fucking, would you post this? Just fucking stupid. Um. So that's that for that match, I suppose. Um, which I'm trying to think of who the fuck even won. I don't even know who won it. Uh, oh, Gray. Yeah. So they had the, so they, the guy who was a last minute replacement in the match is the one who wins the fucking match despite the fuck up. That's cool. Yeah. Um, that's lovely. Um, what I think turned out to be pretty much the highlight of the night. Uh, a six-man lucha tag match: ASF Bandito and Laredo Kid against Ares, Demi- Demonic Flamita, and Gringo Loco. Fucking can't see um, Gringo Loco. Um, Gringo Loco won the match with the Cradle Pile Driver on ASF. Again, I think it was really the only true high. That and the next match. I think Leo Rush played Christian was a, a a a good match as well. Um. And Christian ended up getting the pinfall victory over Leo Rush. And trust me, Leo Rush will come up again in a little bit. <laughs> now, this is the match that really sent me into what the fuck mode to start off. So it's bad enough where you have a match where you're trying to be extreme and you fuck up and you look like an indie show with that match. Okay. Mm-hmm. You would think it would be nothing but up an upward trajectory from there because then you had the Lucha tag match, which came off really well. You had the Leo Rush Blake Christian match, which also I think went off really well. But then you have this fucking. Cardona Janela. So we have. Overbooked. I want to make sure I got all the moving parts correct here. Oh, yes. Number one. It seems like Mark Mark Cardona is really trying way too fucking hard to try and make Chelsea Green as if she's fucking Francine of 2022 now. Because everywhere you look, she's getting speared through something. Or last night, she gets a pile Uh driver through a fucking door. Yep. Um, That's number one. Uh Uh-huh. Number two, we have... I'm going to try to scroll through all this. We have Smart Mark Sterling... Where the fuck he fits in this, I don't fucking know. But he brings down some schmuck in a Vince McMahon hollow Halloween mask. Oh, it wasn't just any schmuck. Oh! <laughs> Who booked this shit? <laughs> you want to talk about doing anything for a fucking payday? $25. 
a, a for a, a payday and a Kit Kat bar. Fucking Fuck virtual. Money, baby. Fuck money, baby. Green and black. Green and black. Virgil? Really? Really, GCW? <laughs> fucking oh, Virgil? Oh, 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 we're just getting started. We're just getting <laughs> fucking started. So then... But you skipped the beginning. You skipped to the beginning. Where Cardona came out in a If Cardona we runs, wins, we riot shirt with fuck Mick Foley on the back of the fucking uh, flannel he was wearing. <laughs> And I guarantee you that fucking shirt's going to be on pro wrestling tees within the next three days. Oh, which reminds me, by the way, I almost forgot. So the beginning of the match, this is this is the thing I almost forgot. He does the Sandman entrance. No, 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 no. no. I, I, we're going to take it to another, to another level. So you you you, you, you <laughs> teased how you teased how you, you called last night's show um a poor one night stand, basically. Yeah. Okay. So if you go back and watch what Cardona does at the start of the match before he tries pinning Janela on a Rough Rider in five seconds, he takes that shirt he wore to the ring and threw it into the crowd, expecting the crowd, and this is legit what he thought, because yep. he said this at one point after the show, he, he expected a John Cena reaction where they throw back the shirt. Yep. Instead, good on these dicks that were in the crowd. They just yeah. held up the shirt and tore it right in his fucking face. Good on you. Fuck Matt Cardona. Anyways. So then after the Virgil spot, fucking a horn swaggo comes out from under the ring. Remember, Swaggo was supposed to be retired. Don't get me fucking started. <laughs> and then I don't, who the fuck is Sam Stackhouse? I, yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> then Marco Stunt shows up and he gets in with, with fucking Swaggle. Um, and then fucking Chelsea Green hit a uh, fucking code red on Stunt and just what? Yeah. Right, 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 oh, but there's more. Oh, I know. We're getting to more. We're getting to more. So Cardona. Why why are doors so popular with this company, by the way? Why doors? Because everywhere else does tables, so they have to be different. Plus, plus doors are, the thing is, it's getting a lot harder to get those wooden tables nowadays because a lot of things have gone to plastic, but you can buy fucking hollow fucking bedroom doors cheap, especially in bulk. You can get them for like 25, 30 bucks a piece. <sighs> fucking whatever. Anyways, so it brings more more da, 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 ba, 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 driver. Uh, okay. So then in a helmet. So then speaking of the Cena pop or yep. the Cena reaction, going back to that Cena R V D match, if you remember the Cena R V D one night stand match from the worst one night stand, one night stand two, <laughs> um Edge came through the crowd dressed in all black with the long with the uh, long black leather jacket and the motorcycle helmet on, and yeah. speared Cena through a table to help set up RVD for the frog splash that got the pinfall for the yeah. what was eventually rebranded the ECW title because if Cena wins, we riot. Correct. So they rip that off by having somebody come out in the same gimmick and mm -hmm. spear Janela through a door. Uh huh. And who is the motherfucker under the motorcycle helmet? Kurt Hawkins. Brian Myers. Correct. Then. Tell me this is going to get some kind of lawsuit. They played the fucking DX theme. And what well, no, no. comes out? No, no. You got to remember, Cardona wins. And then supposedly, supposedly, quote unquote, the crowd started rioting. So to stop them from rioting, break it down. And here comes fucking Sean Waltman. And Waltman and Janela celebrate in the ring. <sighs> the amount of people that got paydays for 10 second spots in this match. I hope it was a group rate. Kind of like that scene in Ocean. You've seen Ocean's 11, I assume, correct? Of course. 
Okay. Kind of like the scene where they're all showing up for the meeting with Clooney and Brad Pitt for the first time, and the dude who owns the, the fucking mansion opens the door, and they're all standing at the door. He's like, what, did you get a group rate? Yeah. <laughs> the same same fucking thing. If you haven't seen Ocean's Eleven, go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> so then after this match, Mance Warner and Atticus Coger, I think yes. his name is? Yes. Um, they get into it with some promo and then they're fighting and then 440 comes out to attack Warner and Matt. Oh, first Matthew justice came out to help Warner. Then 440 Four. comes oh, out to attack <laughs> Warner and justice. And then, yeah. then the lights go. Yep. Up. Yep. And again, this is trying too hard to pay homage to ECW because another guy yeah. who we thought was retired shows up in Sabu. With Alfonso. That's my daddy. You gotta give me a penny. I got it right down the middle. Give me the crack rock. I want to give up, but I can't. I have to keep going. <laughs> fucking The fucking review I'm reading, by the way, that was a great moment and a nice callback for old school ECW fans. No! Because Sapo was fucking retired! He can barely move! No. You, you missed the final part of that. When they celebrated in the ring, they played Walk by Pantera. <laughs> they couldn't even steal his fucking old theme music. They had to use RVD's music. Never mind. I give up. Yeah, couldn't play Hookah um, Blues. Had to play. It was supposedly a tribute to Rob Van Dam. No, he couldn't be there. Suck many dicks. Um. Then you have Ruby Soho going over on Ali Catch. Babyface, Ruby Babyface on this show for no reason. Because that makes sense. Um, fans were not happy when Ali lost. Whatever. Did you really expect Ruby to show up and lose? Come on, let's be fucking real. Um. <laughs> and Jeff Jarrett and Effie, which I. I, I, I. <laughs> Fucking Jarrett went over. <laughs> the guy who came out and fucking Elkabogged the baby face like two, three times in a row wins the fucking feud. The fucking 60 year old. No, it gets better. You know, well, no, it gets better. You know what they're talking about now? What? There's talk about those two running it back for when GCW does their Mania weekend show. Yeah, I'm sure Vince will love that. I'm like, losing brain cells. They just appeared this. on SmackDown on Friday, which means he's probably under a fucking Legends per diem right now. Eh, he was making a pit stop on the way to New York City. Fuck off. Um... <laughs> He, or maybe he was just trying, or maybe he showed up that day to kiss Vince's ass and say, it's just, it's just, it's nothing. It's nothing at all. And Vince is like, well, pal, prove it. Go do a segment tonight. Um. <laughs> then Mox defends the world title against Homicide and beats Homicide. That surprised uh, me. Yeah. Fans chanted "fuck Bully Ray" and now Bully Ray is like, "Oh, thank you very much." And that's not how they fucking meant it, you jerk off. Um, yeah. And then the main event, which I don't understand why they, they didn't have their title match as their main event. I mean, obviously you wanted the big surprise, but still, because well, the whole me, thing was. Let me set this up. Let me just. Okay. Well, because I need something for the setup. Okay. So the past week, Nick Gage has been on Twitter saying, don't go to fucking GCW because they didn't fucking book me. Correct. Um, and even though Nick Gage has been shown in all the commercials that show up on YouTube for it. Correct. So that being said, the, the brain Brits knew that Nick Gage was showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so the Briscoes were having an open challenge for their GCW tag team titles. First everyone was expecting out. FPR. <laughs> 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 
everyone. That's the oh only God. reason that the crowd did not fucking riot was because of the replacement. If it had been anyone else, that crowd would have been pissed. So the first person to come out was Matt Tremont. Now, is there a history there that I don't know about with Matt and GCW? Well, there's a history with Matt and Combat Zone. So Matt goes back with Brett a long way. Okay. Because so, Brett used to be a ref for Combat Zone before he started GCW. Okay. And then Dewey Donovan, who I didn't even know fucking existed in life until <laughs> that last night. <laughs> Dewey Donovan comes out with some Mountain Dew ripoff, do the do fucking blazer awful looking <laughs> vomit lime green shit um, and then brings Nick Gage out to be Tremont's partner um, they basically fought for five minutes with Gage pinning Mark Briscoe while Jay Briscoe seemed to have clearly beaten the count of three to break up the count but yep. they counted the three anyways and said fuck it rang the bell they didn't actually didn't even ring because the bell had to go the, ref, the ref called for the bell there was no fucking bell and the announcer just stood up and said your winners are new and you know the rest so yeah. it's because the finish got botched because they had to go home <laughs> so they fucked up the timing. Let's just put that out there. That's number one. Number two. Um, they had to go home because they had to go off the air for 11 o'clock. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, and Briss, Jay Briscoe even confirmed on Twitter that's why the match was so abrupt. Mm -hmm. Um. Basically, Jay Briscoe said, fuck pay-per-view time restraints. That's literally the tweet he sent out. Um, <sighs> but apparently, and by the way, Mick Foley has since come out and said, fuck Matt Cardona after the best thing from last night. Um, Good. Which, is not, which is nice. That's nice. Um, but that's not the... Where is... Sam Stackhouse no is basically... I, I was just like a Sam Stackhouse is basically like a like a junior Haystacks Calhoun from Texas. He's a fucking schmuck from the looks of it. Why? However, so the opening, the reason, opening uh, battle royal. Did yeah. you know? You know who that was that, that that won the battle royal? I didn't even look at it close enough. Who won it? So the Battle Royal had like a bunch of the people that were inducted into the Indie Hall of Fame the night before. So like Lufisto showed up and shit like that. But the oh, winner right. was Big Vin, who is uh nine eleven who was uh nine one one nine one one. Yeah. That's that's cool. That's pretty cool actually. Yeah. Um have you seen or heard this gauge promo from the end of the show uh no i haven't i've just seen the bit he cut a promo about loving the mdk gang the roster came out hung out in the ring i think he paid oh. homage to uh his dead brother justice Payne and a oh, bunch so of other people that helped. About? yeah okay so nothing important. I was just wondering because I couldn't find anything about what the promo was. Or no, so. sorry, he didn't do that. That was Dickinson and Lauderdale at the beginning of the show, and basically paying homage to everyone who had who hadn't been there. Oh, okay. Dickinson, but and Dickinson announced he'd be competing at the April show. Wait, as in, as in as he'll in, be medically cleared in April. As in Robot Man. As in Chris Dickinson, yes. <laughs> You'll be cleared in April. <sighs> Can I give a piece of advice to Chris? Go right ahead. Chris, I know you're watching or listening. Take a piece of advice. Take it or leave it, honestly. Because you've never met me before, I've never met you. But take it or leave it. I'll put it out there anyways. <laughs> For the sake of what could potentially be of your career, don't fucking do this booking. Chris has a history with, with Brett. He's worked GCW before. 
Chris knows what he's doing. I mean, Chris is the crazier shit for ISW and Hood Slam. It's not nothing you can't handle. Just cover your ass. The one thing, the one thing that GCW did accomplish last night was they were able to get through an entire show without more without anyone gigging. That's a miracle. And, well, because they can't, because it's New York. New York does not do anything deathmatch wrestling related. You are not allowed to blade. You are not allowed to fight anything. All the fucking barbed wire shit, the light tube shit, not allowed. Because the NSAC will get all over you. Duly noted. So, I'm well aware. As, as far as that, that's okay. I applaud you on that. But to give us a fucking B grade knockoff of one night stand to do it, no, thank you. Basically. Basically. Uh, that being said, let's get to the usual fuck ups. Let me pull up my notes. All right. So. I have. <laughs> I kind of have blow by blow notes from Dynamite, and then I have a general thought about AEW that I need to put out there. Uh huh. Well, yeah, because we got to talk about the other thing that I'm into. Let me just. Oh, do, two do, general do, things do. you discussed about AEW. Then I forgot about that because I didn't yes. make a note of it and didn't notice it was mixed in with my Dynamite notes. Come on, motherfucker. Come on. Not SmackDown notes. Not those notes. Let me know when you get there. I actually, I actually, I DVR Dynamite for like the only time just because I was pretty sure I was either not going to watch it or pass out watching it, which I did pass out. I didn't kind of catch the main event. But I'm kind of glad I did because now I have it saved in memory of John Moxley costing fucking company however many thousands of dollars in FCC fees in the first five seconds of the show. Yeah. Do we even know what the hell was being, who, what that fan said to him? The fan basically said something like, get out of the ring, you fucking drunk. Oh, uh, okay. See, I couldn't make out what the hell but the still. fan was yelling. That's why I didn't know. I know, I know. But I like I just couldn't make out what the fan was yelling. That's why I was wondering why he yelled that. I knew it had it was probably related to that, but I just wasn't sure. Um, but then Mox automatically drops an f bomb on live TV on a hot mic. Yeah, you think Tony <laughs> cares? He's made of money. Um, Tony may not care, but fucking Time Warner cares. <laughs> it's the first one he's dropped in two years. Consider yourself lucky. Doesn't um, matter. What's one too many? <laughs> So, I thought the promo was not his best work, but it was good for what it served. Um, then they start promoting their show this coming week in Cleveland because nothing screams beach blast like fucking Cleveland, Ohio in the middle of January. <laughs> God almighty. Um... Then we get to the jobber match of the night, apparently. Fucking. So. You... Oh, I want to make sure I got this straight. So. They were all they were all fucking jobber matches. Well, I mean, no, 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 so no, no. we had the this... opening tech. I called the entire show in the first five minutes in my notes. The only the only match I got wrong was the opening tag. What was the opening tag? Oh, was that the, the opening tag? Was fucking was, that, was Adam the, the big tag? Adam Cole and Britt Baker oh, oh, right. in his pockets Cole and, and the Brit. alien. Oh right, because you had a uh, because you thought it was going to be Statlander pinning Britt to set up for get a, a title, title shot, shot and end up being Cole, yep. which was <sighs> blow blowing. Which there was okay overbooked match, but that's a AEW. We have. A table spot in the opening match for no reason. We have Britt bump like Jesus to the table. Because let's just show Britt that she doesn't know how to fucking... That There's a saying we used to have when we would run drills. And it's don't bump like Jesus. 
because basically when you learn to bump and here, here's for you some, some greenhorns at home when you learn to bump you usually start arms crossed over here like this is just basic right. learning how to bump so when you right. go back and your hands are kind of like this for those of you at home kind of like a like a marionette pup yeah yeah like yeah people like who are, yeah people who don't know how to bump correctly automatically put their arms out at the side so they bump like jesus yeah, That's it's why either we hand, say don't bump like yeah. Jesus. Hands out, yeah. or or if you really hands out like a cross, or hands out like a cross. If you're at least kind of smart, you put your hands down so that your palms add to the sound. But whatever. Well, yeah, when you come down, your palms hit. It's usually like all of this hits all your right. forearm, which it sucks when you first start doing it because that that gets tender pretty quick. But you do not put your arms out to the sides like you are crucified. That is the sorry, sign. We're, we're breaking down the fourth wall, taking a bump, folks. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, but I have to point this out because you. Don't, no, you're it, right. You're absolutely right. It fucking exposes the fuck out of the business. I know. When we used to do it, and someone would be like, "Fucking," we would have like a new recruit, and they would go like the, this fucking kid that I fucking stuck up for, who who wanted to be a wrestler so fucking bad, and ended up fucking us. That's another day. <sighs> the first time he gets in the ring, he bumps and he bumps like Jesus, and Mike Milano goes, "Ooh." Christmas and grabs a fucking kendo stick and runs into the ring and starts backing him in the fucking arms. <laughs> That's what Mike used to do. He used to go, ooh, Christmas. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> we learned the hard oh, way. Shit. Oh, God. I but no. Jesus once and never again. <laughs> the table spot wasn't for no reason, though. Okay. It helps set up Adam Cole being angry at Pockets, and now they have a Lights Out match this coming Wednesday. Adam Cole was already angry at Pockets. There was a fucking... They won that match! There was no... But yeah, but so... And then fucking AEW trying to be like, look how cinematic we are. Does an overhead shot like that wasn't predictable? Does a downward-looking shot of fucking Britt Baker bumping like Jesus through the fucking table on the outside? Just like, yeah, you, you just had a single, a single camera aimed down at the outside of the ring just randomly. Like, talk about suspension of disbelief. No. And then, fucking, yeah, it's like, if if Statlander and Pockets had won that match, then yeah, Adam Cole could have went, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. But no, Cole has beaten Cassidy every fucking match. So why the fuck do they need a blow off? Why? I'll tell you why. Know. I'll tell you exactly why. You know why? Because what happened last week? What did we talk about at the top of the show last week? Enlighten me. The PWI Awards. What, what got him? match of the year in the PWI Awards last year? Oh, Britain Thunder Rosa. In a lights out match. There. So, oh look! Let's play Kate to the marks! Let's play Kate to the internet! Let's play Kate to the fucking PWI! This is match of the year last year, and that was with two chicks. Watch, oh, we're sure gonna get match of the year this year by taking our baby face hero that fucking doesn't talk and our fucking and baby, and we're gonna have them in the same thing, the lights out match, and it's gonna get matched of the year, and it's gonna get so many hits on Twitter. We're not gonna get anyone watching it on TV, but Twitter, and Uncle Dave's gonna give it 88 stars. Fuck that. How much are you willing to bet, though, that you're not going to see both guys gig like both chicks did? Oh, that, yeah, they're gonna. They're gonna. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If no. they do a lights out match and they don't gig, then the fans are going to crap on it. They're going to both gig like stuck pigs. If fucking, if fucking not Cowboy and fucking Bryant Danielson will fucking gig in the first five minutes of a fucking championship match on regular, do better bet they're both fucking gigging. You're probably going to see fucking light tubes for no reason. Nope. Telling you. Nope. I already know what's going to happen. Okay. 
It's going to be a one-way massacre until the very end. Okay. So only one guy's going to gig, and then the one who gigs and gets the shit beat out of him for pretty much the whole match is going to suddenly win. Eh. I think it's just going to be wabbit season, duck season with, with fucking furniture. That's all I think it's going to be. Knowing the track records we have, you're probably going to be in, a, be in the right one because why make sense? <laughs> um, let's see. What do I have next? Um, oh, the, the the jobbing that I really wanted that I was that I was referring to before you brought the tag match. Um, Archer and Kazarian. So, so no. So we had no Archer Kazarian was in the second hour. Um. So I want to make sure I've got this straight. Um, we had we had cult of personality survive eight power bombs and look defeated against a yep. somewhat greenhorn and barely win that match. Uh huh. We built up Spears on Rampage that Friday and like on Dynamite was, right before the match. Right. And then you have the bell ring and Punk gives a GTS and wins in 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Fuck off. Yep. But <laughs> Everyone knew Sean Spears wasn't winning that match. So they, so they basically said everyone knows Spears isn't winning this match. So just end it. Save TV time. Remember when Sean Spears was supposed to be like the new big bad heel of that company? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. I literally have nothing right now. Like, I know I have more notes, but I mentally have nothing right now. I. Do you have anything? Because I, I I can't right now. It, it, there, you can't really say anything because the match was fucking four seconds long. Like the entrances and the intros took longer than the match. Like by the a intro, long shot. The intros and entrances were shit. MJF walking out to go to the commentary table took longer than the match. Yep. I even said, y'all ready for the CM Punk greatest hits tape? Ten seconds later, called it. <laughs> Spears left WWE for this. <laughs> um, Cody's promo, I... Well, no, no. Pro you got you to go back, because there was a segment after that. Oh, fuck these segments. What was it? It was another week and another person getting attacked backstage. Uh, fucking... Uh, Christian getting attacked by the gun club after Billy Khan asked for his sons to get a tag title shot. Oh, right, right. Because suddenly because that all happens. Well, well, it's because Christian's their agent because Marco Stunt's contract is going bye-bye. Um, but uh, yeah, just like, you know, fucking another week, another fucking time on AEW where someone gets jumped during a fucking interview or a backstage venue because that I'm happens every fucking week. I'm just shocked it wasn't Eddie Kingston at this point. Um... And then we get to Cody. Um, did I not call so it? Did I not call it last I, week? Well, yeah. I mean, we all saw that coming. Um, when I'm making notes, I usually go thumbs up or thumbs down on a promo. I put the <laughs> thumbs down emoji, but I was honestly more middle of the road than anything else. I thought it was terrible. Um, the reason I was more middle of the road is because I think the the crowd just basically gave up and gave Cody what he wanted eventually. Which just shows they're fucking sheep. Right. It's the only reason I even say middle of, otherwise it was a thumbs down promo for me. The whole thing was Cody acting like everything he has done was bigger than the pipe bomb. 
and that he has been the savior of fucking wrestling for the past three years. And it was supposed to be a baby face in doing so. Yeah. Basically. And him um, literally pulling John Cena's lines with, and that's why I won't turn heel. Uh, the next note I have was, and you can tell me if I missed something, um, was Pox promo, uh, promo, I should say Pox package that played after the Brody King, Nelkai Black tag match. Oh, let's see here. I think that was the next match on the show. I'm trying to see. I'm still in the notes from the Cody promo. 56 minutes in was the mark, uh, was the time mark of the first WWE mention. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. House of Black. By the way, is it me or did Brody get more tats since ROH shut down? No, you just... It, they're, more, uh, they're, they're more evident because ROH had less lighting. Mm, okay. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, no, yeah, there's just the, the promo there, yeah, because because so remember nothing. they 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 beat up uh, the blondes, right? Yeah, yeah, they beat up the blondes. Yeah, and... doing the fucking um, yeah, fucking yeah. yeah so yeah. fucking Alistair Black beat both of the Varsity Blondes on his own. But we're supposed to expect that the Varsity Blondes would be a challenge towards Aleister Black and Aleister Black bigger. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It, I don't know. And I just, and I'm sorry, but uh, your fucking tag team finisher is already being done by two real Vikings on another fucking channel. The Dante's Inferno is the exact same thing as the Viking I, experience. I know what I know. I fucking know what you're referring to. <laughs> it was, they did it on SmackDown on Friday night. I'm well aware of what it was. I, 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 well, I, I they've got been you. doing it as a tag finisher for a few years. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was I was picking up what you were putting down. I got it. Longer than Black and Brody King have been tagging. <laughs> <sighs> a lot longer. But yeah, and so then yeah, so so like now so now. So now Pac is going to be the whole big threat because Pac is blind and they're probably going to have a goddamn blindfold match. So here comes my question. Yeah. So this mean we get, well, no, it might be Pac and Penta first mm. and then Pac yeah. with Black by themselves. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah. Um, next note I have is about Lambert and Archer not making sense to me. So if there's something else I missed, go ahead. Yeah, well, because they have they had the, the promo where they had, they had Jake there who like Jake is not doing well because Jake just got over COVID and Jake had COPD. So like God love Jake for wanting to try. But what if yeah, they basically basically they had Jake do the handoff to Lambert. That's all that was. So now Lambert is managing Archer, which I'm sorry, but Archer is a lot more formidable than the other two guys Lambert manages. Can I answer something there too, by the way? Sure. Now, obviously, this might be a bad analogy. But I'm going to mm -hmm. fucking make it anyways. <laughs> Them pushing Jake out in front of the camera on Wednesday night yeah. felt almost as distasteful. I said almost because much different... How should I put this? Um, the variants were different between these two guys. But I felt like Tony pushing Jake through the curtain, not literally, but 
figuratively, um, was almost in as poor taste as, and I'll see if you you remember this. Remember Scott Hall checking himself out of the hospital just to make an indie date in Massachusetts that one night? Yeah. And needing help to the Top ring rope. and barely being able to move. Well, he was also very drunk and thought he was in England. Correct. Um, yeah, almost in as poor of taste as that. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's why they did like, here's the, here's the thing. Like they had the pre-tape that showed Jake basically doing the handoff. And then when the time came for fucking Archer versus Kazari and they had Jake walk out with them just to be like, all right, go ahead. And fucking goes back down the tunnel. Like right. you already had the pre-tape to establish that. Like did, did, what, what was the point? Like fucking Jake, Jake almost died. <laughs> <laughs> Jake can't breathe, and y'all are like, Jake, can he still out there. walk? Can he still walk? Yeah, about 20 feet without needing to catch his breath. All right, fuck it. Send him out. Yep. But, it, but, but here's 15 feet. Get to here. And then turn around and come back. Yeah, yeah. Get to this mark on the stage and then turn around and go back once you have your breath. Literally. I'm like, I'm surprised they didn't just have fucking Paige and Scorpio fucking weekend at Bernie's his ass out there. That's I shouldn't say that. Um, there were some guys in England that tried pulling that shit this like a week ago. At a, at a show? No, they tried weekend of Bernie's the fucking dead guy to go get his fucking pension check at the fucking bank. Oh, Andrew McCarthy tweeted, "I was nowhere near England." Jesus. <laughs> oh. Um. But yeah, they fucking. But so yeah, that then Archer versus Kazari and G. I wonder who's winning that. Mm-hmm. And Kazari, and then, by the way, was clearly not a hundred percent because, if I remember correctly, he eventually uh, tweeted out either that night or the next morning about how he had an infection in his elbow that had to be drained that day of the show. Wonderful. And he clearly, like, he was not feeling a hundred percent afterwards. So. But God forbid um, they switch up the booking and put someone else out there. No. No. Why, why would you do that? Why? Why? Especially when you the, know it's going to be a fucking squash. Like, there's why, no fucking why, reason for that. Why would you change it? Why? That doesn't make sense. Right. And so then after the match, there's a fucking standoff between Paige and Archer on the fucking, on the fucking ramp. And Paige mm-hmm. fucking beats the fuck out of Archer. So you just made your contender look weak. Sure. And fucking and that yeah the mat and the match with Kazarian for as hers Kazarian was went way too long. Correct. It was That's funny because awesome. it was funny because right after that I said uh, they were as a backstage henchman I said notice Leo Rush is oh uh, sorry Leo Leo Rush is nowhere to be found and we found out why later. <laughs> Was that the Dante Martin promo uh, backstage yes. thing afterwards with uh, yep. Yep. Ricky Lee Stark. and uh, Ricky Ricky Stark. Stark. Oh, yeah, oh, no. Powerhouse House. Moriarty. Yeah, no. Um, it was Moriarty and uh, who the fuck? Well, it eventually led to Hobbs and Starks, but he was there. W- Matt Seidel. Thank you, Matt Seidel. Thank you. Um, and then that led to the Hobbs and Starks thing. And then, was there anything else, or did it go right from there to the pre-tape with Paige, Sky, and Lambert? Uh, no, uh, that was, uh, what do you call it? There was, uh... Oh, was it uh, Deep and Sky Blue? Hirsch. Yes, Serena Deep and Sky Blue. Yep. Another squash. Which, another squash, and then another fucking package for fucking Hook. Who belongs on fucking YouTube. Oh, oh, that reminds me. That reminds me. That reminds me. Hold on. Hold on. I saw something on Twitter this morning that made me want to scream. What was it? The comparison of Hook and Goldberg? Yes! What are we doing? No! 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 
Yeah, I commented on that. No. Shit. Okay, number one, number one. I'm, I'm going to go into the sidebar off of Dynamite. I'm going to go into this. I'm going to go into this a bit. Number one, Goldberg wasn't starting to be built as Goldberg until about 15 to 20 weeks into his squash matches. He was just slowly getting there. And then he, they had a monster at hand. That was a completely different animal in a completely different time. You see Goldberg in a dark alley, you go, oh shit. You see Hook in a dark alley and go, I'm taking this kid's wallet. I'm sorry, but my crippled ass would knock Hook the fuck out in fucking two shots. Me hitting him in the face and him hitting him in the ground. I've knocked out motherfuckers that weigh fucking 100 pounds more than me. That kid would be dead. That would be like Butterbean versus fucking Bart Gun. Boom. Gone. Don't try to push this kid as this unstoppable fucking monster when he weighs 85 fucking pounds soaking wet. Oh, look, he's got abs. I don't give a fuck. They'll fucking crumble with two gut shots from these, motherfucker. And I'm fucking decrepit. I'll even do it standing on one leg. The bad leg. Give me a fucking break. Stop pushing this kid like he's a fucking monster. And I guarantee the only reason his matches are on Rampage is so they can be edited. Because no one ever gives results of Rampage because they're already too fucking tired. But Rampage is always fucking pre-taped. You never see Hook on a non-pre-taped Rampage. Unless was this past was he on this rampage this past week? No, because yes. he was versus solo. Oh no, but he was. there's a reason they've been yeah, there's a reason they've been keeping week. his matches. Okay. So this is the first is actual Serpentico. live event he's been on. Against Serpentico, Yeah, that's yeah. right. Which okay, and I'm gonna get to that. So fucking they want to make this kid believable, but they put him against Serpentico, who when I went and checked the AEW records is like eleven eighty six. Like, like it, it's, it's fucking sad. So you expect people to believe that this, this isn't going to be a squash match? Like, it's fucking, it's, I can't fucking stand it. I cannot with this fucking kid, like, oh, he does all the moves his dad does. Yeah, and you know something? His dad looked like a badass because he was working guys in similar size. His dad didn't weigh 85 fucking pounds. Like, I don't care that you got your goddamn Dragon Ball Z hair and your boxing trunks. Fuck off. I will annihilate you. Serpentico, by the way, didn't even get a chance to get all his fucking gimmick off before Flippies the end in. of the match. <laughs> right. No, he didn't not. get a chance to take his gimmick off before the end of the match. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, because they, they had him rest- look like a fucking monster. Yeah, Serpentico was... At least I'm pretty sure he never got it off. Because what happened was, do you know his the gimmick he usually does before the match? No, because he's on YouTube. I don't, th- I don't know if this was new or not, but he has, so he has like some jacket or some shit on, but he has like, you, like, you know those fake spider webs that can come exploding out of your hands when you. Yeah. Okay. So he has those. Video. Yeah, he has those propped in his hands, and then his whole thing is that he'll step. Like he'll be standing center ring against the ropes and then he'll come to center center and let him uh-huh. out. So he lets them okay. out and then boom, that's when Hook came in. I don't think he ever because I remember seeing the, the fucking webs flying around the whole fucking time. I'm like, he never took his fucking gimmick off. What the fuck are they doing? Like this is one bad trip away from somebody breaking their fucking neck. Um, right. And that's yeah, the thing, they're sure. trying to push this kid like everyone should love him, but he's supposed to be a fucking heel. Like, doing heel shit and fucking, like, I just, I fucking can't. I fucking can't. It is the, it is worse nepotism than Dominic Mysterio. It's worse. And I fucking hate Dominic Mysterio. But at least with Dominic, they would hide the shit and always have him only work with one person for fucking eight months at a time because that was the only person they could trust with him to hide the weaknesses of having that kid on the main fucking roster. But no, they're just feeding random people to this fucking kid and letting him go out there thinking he's a... Ba- it's the exact same thing where you watch any documentary of people talking about Taz 
about now that fucking ECW is over and they're like, Taz believed his own hype. He drank his own Kool-Aid. He thought he was a fucking badass. Fuck Taz. He's a fucking midget. I'd fucking wreck him. That's exactly what's going on with Hook. The kid's believing his own fucking hype. Thinking he's a fucking badass when he looks like a fucking 12-year-old. Feed me more. Feed me more. I bet Ryback would still lose to fucking Hook. (laughs) Because oh, Ryback would on. blow a fucking ankle trying to fucking charge at him. Oh, come on. That's harsh. That's harsh. Fuck Ryback. Fuck Ryback. Fuck, fuck, fuck do we, Ryback. Do we, do we want to talk about that main event, by the way, or not? Well, let me, let, let's see. Let me, let, let me get down to my notes. Oh, wait. No, so, yeah, I did what? It was the fucking the acclaimed versus fucking Sting and Derby. Gee, I wonder who's winning this one. Do we really want to discuss that? Uh, it was cringe as fuck. I'm trying to think here. What, let me see. I think that was when Sting did the fucking table spot that I said shit that makes no I'll take shit that makes no sense for five hundred dollars. Yep. I even took in the discussion group. I said my dog sums this show up, and I took a picture of Titus passed out on his chair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like shit made no sense. Fucking. And fucking, and here's the thing, fucking, they had Sting, because they fucking had Sting playing Superman again. Because, like, that's the thing, is I'm Tommy 60 with a neck the made match. of glass. Right. But he does the whole thing where I'm 60 and my neck is made of glass, but I'm going to annihilate and no sell these fucking kids in the end. Mm-hmm. Like, Basically. And the thing is, and the thing is, it's fucking Sting. He's fucking 60. Yet the fucking, the, let the fucking internet jack wagons fucking complain about fucking Goldberg coming in fucking WWE and how he's old and blah, blah, blah. At least Goldberg's neck isn't made of fucking glass. Right. And he's a special attraction that comes around once every six months. Sting is on TV almost every fucking week. But the thing, and the, the but you're like, oh, but, but it's Sting. No, fuck you. If this was Raw, if this was SmackDown, you'd be bitching that a 60-year-old guy is burying young talent and taking their fucking spot. (sighs) It's just such bullshit. But yeah, so all the matches were the night except for the main... I fucking call it. fucking Serena over Sky Blue, Archer over Kazarian, acclaimed over Sting and Darby, or what do you call it? Sting and Darby over acclaimed. Like it was the most predictable episode of fucking Dynamite in recent memory. But hey, they got 1.003 million people. Like, guess what? Remember, remember the whole thing about the jump to TBS was supposed to get them so many more viewers. Remember, that was the argument, was more people will watch as soon as it's on TBS because TBS is in more households. Well, it's been three weeks, and the highest rating you had was your first week, which was 1.05. And as far as I remember, the highest you've ever had was 1.2 million, which was last year when Sting came out for the first time. Or sorry, two years ago now. Well, a year and a half, a year and how many months? Whatever. 2020. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fuck it. Oh no, 2019. God damn. So two years ago. Yep. So here it is. Um, I want the excuse. What's the excuse now of you're not drawing new people? I want to know why. You have no excuses now. You're on the bigger network. You're running unopposed. There's no NXT in your way. You're bringing in all these ex-WWE people who supposedly were misused and you're supposedly using them correctly. Why aren't the numbers there? And don't give me that demo bullshit. Because I am sick of fucking seeing people like fucking Fightful and Sportskeeda go... Dynamite beats Raw. No, the demo does not fucking count. In real life, where we where we all live, the demo is bullshit. The demo is one portion of statistics. 
But when people look at ratings, they look at total number. It does in a baseball game. Doesn't matter how many hits you get or how many runs you get. Um, I believe runs, if I remember correctly. In football, does it matter how many first downs you get or what your final score is? Does it matter how many quarters you were ahead or what the final score was? If you're a Buffalo Bills fan like my wife, you probably prefer quarters you were ahead right now. Oh, did the Bills lose you? I didn't. I didn't pay. I, all I know is the fucking Tampa Bay loss, so I was happy about that. But I didn't catch any of the games yesterday. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, dude. Nah, dude, my fucking I, my team had a shit year, so <laughs> it's my wife's team, not mine. This is what it is. Um, yeah, it's just it's garbage. Um, but there is the other matter of AEW we need to talk about. Correct. Um. So the talk right now, let's preface it by saying this. Like so obviously, world. Big Swole has gone, been gone public. She's gone. Um, also, Leo Rush has publicly come out and said his contract expires on Valentine's Day. He will not be resigning. And he supposedly, supposedly... He's been there for a cup of coffee. Um... He wants to go into retirement number 49,628. That's, eh, that's put supposedly. that ball back in the bingo tumbler. Right. Um, now, the talk has been that this trend of wrestlers potentially revealing that they're going to be free agents is expected to continue in the coming weeks as several contracts that are coming up are go- not going to be renewed and just silently left alone. Nothing yep. coming up as far as renewals or anything of that sort. And AEW will not announce anything about it. Correct. Brian Cage has also been kind of teasing something similar to that effect. Joey especially, Janela. Yep. Uh, especially Cage because of the shit that his wife's been saying in recent months about AEW. Yep. Because that's fucking smart. Mm-hmm. Um. So here's what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to scroll through the list of talent that I have here. Now, I'm going the cheating route and going with Wikipedia. If I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be 100% accurate, but I'm going to scroll through and just throw out names that I would assume are around this deadline of contracts that will probably not get renewed or could be under question. Peter Avalon got released already, and there was no word about it. Yeah, Peter Avalon was a nobody. It's okay. I was no, I wasn't big on him, but he was there since day one. Correct. I'm well aware. Um. So, I guess the first thing we start with, because again, I'm going in alphabetical order, and I'm starting with the males, because that's how the list on Wikipedia. I guess the group I start with, honestly, is Dark Order, because I would think Reynolds and Silver mm-hmm. are in that ballpark. Or close to it. Uno is. Um, as far and Grayson as Grayson, probably too. Uno, Grayson, Vince Beach. Who? The um, t- t- ten. Oh, okay. <laughs> Vince Beach. I was about to say, whoa, whoa. What did that blast from my past get an AEW contract? Yeah, not Vince Beach, but it's, it's something. Oh yeah, it's... shit! I know, I know what you mean, but holy yeah. shit. <laughs> his name came up. No, the only reason his name was on the top of my head was because someone was asking about. So, oh. uh, we were talking about Mike Sparta the other day, and Logan Black was like, "I hear all these people do impressions of Mike Sparta, but I've never, I've never met the guy." And so I found like Mike Sparta clips online, and most of them had been uploaded by Vince Beach. So that's why it was stuck oh my in my head at the top. Wow, Vince Beach. That's a name and a person I haven't seen or heard in a while. Yeah, my bad on that. <laughs> no, you're you're fine. You're fine. Oh my goodness. Um if you if you work around the North East, if you work around the Northeast or you're familiar with Northeast Independent Wrestling, you'll get why yeah. that was a blast of the past for me. Holy shit. Um yeah, so Dark Order might be cut down a bit. I think Silver will stay because Danielson likes him. You think Alex is gone? Probably. And Stu. And Uno. You think 
You think like yeah, I don't see the Paul? Dark Order surviving. Because I'll pretty much leave you with Colt, mm-hmm. Anna J, and Silver. Colt, Anna J, ten. He might stay because he's kind of bigger, and technically Brody's widow and kid. Because mm. Brody's widow is like under contract. Oh yeah, Brody's widow is now doing community relations stuff. She's like a yeah. behind the scenes yeah. suit essentially. But I could I could see the dark order just going away. Um and Helico and uh Jack oh, Evans. Fucking, yes. Yeah, I could see them going. It's so weird. Every time I see like Jack Evans, like Jack Evans used to fucking amaze me. Back early 2000s, like, sorry, early to mid, like, 05, I would say. Fucking Jack Evans with Generation Next when it was him, Austin Aries, Alex Shelley. Fucking Jack Evans impressed the fuck out of me. That's also when he had no hair and looked like Eminem. I was going to say, wasn't Jack Evans also doing a bunch of crazy shit for CZW back in the day? Yes, he was. But that was also, he was like one of the first people ever to the 630. Oh yeah. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I was, I yeah, I was fucking one of the ROA shows. I was at fucking the open, not the opening match. The second match on the card, I think second or third was fucking Jack Evans versus Spanky when Kendrick was still doing the Spanky gimmick and it was fucking great. Wow. But yeah, like, I don't know what happened to Jack Evans somewhere along the line. Like he learned his ability to cut a promo and he just started looking weird. It's like, he started looking like he was 12, but not, like looking like he was twelve and fifty at the same time. Hmm. But well, yeah, like, and Helico's got a losing record on fucking YouTube, so like, I don't right. see them keeping him around. I'm gonna bring this up with a question mark because the fact that they're connected right now in mm-hmm. the Butcher, the Blade, and Bunny. So. The bunny they'll keep. Pepper Parks, I don't know. The Blade, he's probably going to be begging to stay because the ba- his band just broke up. Hmm. That's a problem. Um, yeah, I have not had any pleasant experiences with him. I th- I'm assuming they would hang on to these guys because... Of the last name of one of these guys, mm-hmm. I think the Varsity Blondes would be around that same time frame, wouldn't they? Um, no, Varsity Blondes are actually relatively newer under contract. They're, I don't think they'd be up for a while. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's keep going here. Um. No. 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 All right, let me let me ask you. All right, let me ask you this. Um, do you think Jericho's a lifer, or do you think he'll eventually see the light of day and be like, you know what, fuck this shit? Jericho is squeezing Tony Khan for every dollar he can, and then when that fucking and then when that fucking cash cow fucking runs dry, he's gonna go crawling back to Vince to try to get a Hall of Famer fucking gig. Jericho is a leech. Best friends, wouldn't they be kind of close too? No, because they're 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 caught up in all the shit with the fucking pudding gang right now, so they're not gonna go anywhere. Because that's Chuck Taylor and fucking Trent along with fucking Pockets and fucking Crit Statlander, and they're not gonna break them up. And that means unfortunately Darby is clued in too much too. Um, oh, they're going to hold on to Darby until he can be chewed into the fucking ground and they can't hide it anymore. That's unfortunate. Leva Bates. I don't see her sticking around, especially now that Peter Avalon's gone. Right. And remember remember how the, she was misused by NXT and they were going to do so much more with Leva Bates. That ended in about she three months. never made it on fucking Dynamite. She was on YouTube every fucking week as Peter Avalon's fucking librarian. 
Love Paige and Sky. I know they're too clued in right now with Lambert, but I mean, what Paige, the fuck are they Paige doing? Paige has been there less than a year. Paige has been there less than a year. Uh, Scorpio Sky, I think they're keeping. Just because they kept it like they've tried to keep him prominent after the SCU breakup. What about Private Party? They're keeping them. Not that not that anyone else would want them, but they're keeping them. Just throwing it out there. Well, because especially the, the that was the other promo, the backstage promo with how fucking Andrade how how fucking had a merger with the Hardy family office. Correct. Like fucking ridiculous for no reason. I know. Is Kip Sabian? I know he's injured right now. I don't see Kip Sabian sticking around. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Him Uh, or Penelope. Who else? Something we already mentioned. Um, Seidel is tied into a story right now, so that wouldn't make sense. Right now, but I could see them letting Seidel go. Where the fuck has Miro been, by the way? That's what I was saying last week. All these these fucking promos for him, and he still hasn't fucking showed up at all. Uh huh. Like, what am I missing here? Like, Um, it would have made sense for him to be the one to show up and attack Paige. Nick Camarado? Oh, Solo Camarado, go, go. No, they're tied in with Cody's boys, so they ain't going to go anywhere. Them and QT, they're like Cody's lap dogs. They're not going anywhere. Sadly. They're going to be the new, like, Brooklyn Brawlers on fucking YouTube. When Santana and Ortiz aren't going to go anywhere because they're too tied no. in with the bullshit. Yeah. With, uh, oh, who the fuck are they? With been Kingston in? and with Jericho yeah, and Kingston, all that shit. Yeah. Kingston, thank you. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's pretty much it for the men. Yeah. The women, there's going to be a lot of people that... Oh, no, I forgot somebody. Who? The only reason I'm hesitant to say this is because of... There's a reason. You'll probably know what I'm referring to. Uh, mm-hmm. Sunny Kiss. Yeah, they're probably not going to renew Sunny's, and that's a goddamn shame. Females... Oh, and Marco Stunt's about to run out, run out too. Well, I, I passed over him because we already mentioned that. I mentioned that before I started doing the list. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, I must have missed out when I was naming off. Yep. Women, you're just looking at this list going, I've seen half these bitches' names. <laughs> See, it's weird because... What's weird is that I feel like this one woman is tied into a current story, kind of, sort of. I don't get what else she can do at this point, and that's Nyla Rose. Because they're doing this shit with her and Mercedes working with Vicky, but it's like... They'll hold on to Nyla just because they need a monster female, and also because... Basically, they will hold on to Nyla uh, until they sign Lady Tapa or um, or uh, fucking uh, uh, Deb. Oh my god, I forgot her name. They'll keep Nyla because Awesome Kong wanted to retire. Well, that too, but no, not Kong. Um, what the? Oh my god. She just got released. Fox Cousin. Oh, Nia Jax? Yeah. Oh, my God. My brain. Because you changed your name on fucking Instagram. I literally forgot. So, yeah. If fucking Tony Khan can snap up Nia Jax, Nyla is going to be gone. They'll have, like, a brief feud, and then Nyla will be gone. You think Nia Jax wants to stay in the business? If Tony Khan says, here, money. Mm. TikTok dances and Instagram views only get you so much money. And plus, he would hire her just to be like, maybe one day I can get The Rock. Oh. (laughs) 
Oh, man. <laughs> oh, did you know that they, had minus, they have minus one officially listed as a trainee for AEW? Yep. Christ almighty. He's going to start <sighs> training in 10 years when AEW doesn't exist anymore. Great. Try to get your times tables down first, kid. No, he's too busy teaching Ty Conti how to cut a promo. <laughs> That's a callback for you. Imagine uh, that kid since 18, AEW has been bought out by WWE, and he shows up in Stanford going, I had this agreement with Tony Khan, and Vince goes, get this fucking kid out of my office. Until he learns who Sonny is, and then he goes, oh, fuck. Um... Yeah, I think that pretty much sums up everything. I think that's yeah. All right, that's good for yeah, them. Yeah, you're gonna like I said, there's gonna be more female talents and male talents, obviously. But the whole problem is, is the whole silently letting them go shit that really upsets me. Now there, there's a lot of talents that I could really give a far less about on there, mm-hmm. like, but it doesn't matter in the fact that this is their livelihood you're taking away. There's something I forgot to discuss when we were talking about like, contract renewals a couple weeks back and shit. Basically, because everyone bitches about people releasing people from WWE out of nowhere and all this shit and how it's not fair. Now, I suggest this to you as an argument. People from AEW are literally seeing their contract expire being told that there's going to be no negotiations to keep them and to just go the fuck away. There will be no public announcement made about it. And basically, kick rocks. We're done with you. Hope you save some money. Go back to the indies and fuck off. Whereas WWE, when they do the releases, yes, it does suck. We've already gone over this. It sucks when people get fucking released out of their contracts, especially when they've just signed and shit. Here's the issue. When WWE puts people under contract, <clears throat> and I wanted to talk about this in Kevin Owens Renewed, but it slipped my mind at the time. Because there was talks about how Vince doesn't like um, the, uh, the the some stipulation in the contracts, and people were like, what the fuck was that? It's actually kind of timely that you bring this up then, because Sami Zayn just signed an extension over the past. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So WWE contracts, the way the verbiage goes in them is that the contracts are set like you may sign a contract for three years, but that contract is set for renewal slash renegotiation every 90 days. It's basically so they have an out at any time when a quarter comes up or if they need to release you. Sorry, JJ had to step away for a quick second. Uh, Getting into the independent contractor status. Yes. Yes. When you're an independent contractor. So when you so basically when it comes time for uh the quarter to come up, basically it can roll over and renew with no harm, no foul, and you keep going. Or say something maybe happening where all of a sudden you're selling more merch or something like that, there can be a stipend added in about your merch sales, about getting a higher percentage, whatever, yada, yada. It's a simple thing. So that way you're not stuck on a renegotiation at the full-time mark. What happens is if that quarter comes around, it usually comes around with the financial quarters. So they go, okay, we're cutting you. That's where the night, that's where that 90 day renewal does not happen. So therefore the contract kind of becomes null and void, but what happens is you still get the, that's why they do the 90 day no compete for the next quarter. And you are still paid for that next quarter. So while it does suck, you still get another three months worth of pay and you have three months to get your ducks in a row to find, to find another source of revenue. As much as it sucks, I would rather have that than just be told, no, we're not renegotiating with you. Fuck off. I mean, is that just me? I mean, 
financially and financially it makes all the sense in the world to want to be in a WWE situation. I totally understand that. Right. But you know, about how and then fucking and that just goes to the whole thing too of people saying about people saying like, oh, WWE doesn't treat their talent right and you're sitting in catering. The fuck do you think these guys that have been relegated to YouTube have been doing? Yeah. Like, and especially the ones on Dark Elevation who are literally just doing studio tapings in fucking Florida. Like, you're working in front of a fucking you're, you're working in front of a small ass TV audience that you could be working at indies with bigger crowds. And it's like, yeah, you may be making some money, but in the end of it, is it really fucking worth it? You know, the whole thing is that AEW cares about the wrestlers that AEW cares about their livelihood. And that's why they give them creative input. And they let them still work the indies and yada, yada. And in the end of it, no, it's just showing now like the chinks in the armor are starting to really fucking show themselves that Tony Khan's a piece of shit. And that all he cares about is playing with his fucking new toys. And he could give a fuck about all the people that were busting their asses the first year the company was in business trying to fucking do shit and fucking work it, working in fucking arenas and fucking in fucking in front of 300 people. For dark. Like, and it's like, it's like the shit that was evident that you could see. They'd be in some arena that only holds fucking 3,000 people tops. And there's only one side of, uh, opposite hard camera that has people in it. And the rest of the fucking the arena is fucking blacked out. But it's, it's, it, it baffles me. It fucking baffles me that people will say like, oh, Oh, well, you know what happens with AEW, but they'll be all over fucking WWE when WWE at least offers a better financial fucking compensation package to when something happens. And like, and they also, when someone's contract is up, they try to renegotiate no matter who it is. The matters of the renegotiation are completely up to, up to the individual and it's a different per person thing. Like I'm sure like, I don't know what the gar what the negotiations were with Gargano, but at least they tried. But at least there were negotiations. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure fucking Joey Janela and fucking Marco Stunt and fucking all them just like are getting a FedEx being like, thanks for having you. Bye. Yeah, probably. All right, well, before we get into discussing WWE and the road to WrestleMania starting up with the Royal Rumble, we want to make sure that you can get yourself on the road with the right vehicle, and you can get that done with our friends over at Mohawk Honda in Scotia Glenville. To do it, you with new goals. You can start the new year right behind the wheel of a new or a certified pre-owned vehicle that fits your budget and fulfills one of your New Year's resolutions to get a dependable vehicle. You can stop by Mohawk Honda to check out their broad selection of pre-owned inventory. You can find the right make, model, and price point to fit your budget. And you can also get a top dollar for your trade-in as they also still have the Kelly Blue Book instant cash offer happening where you can get cash in hand the same day you come in and trade in your older vehicle. Make sure you check out Mohawk Honda, whether you visit Luis, the VIP man Morales, Jake Hot Sauce Doyle, Brian McKenna, Mike Benice, Cam McKenna, or any of the other great salespeople or lease consultants that will be able to make your New Year's automotive, automotive goals their top priority. So start the New Year right with just the right deal at Mohawk Honda in Scotia Glenville, where they always go out of their way to please you. So let's get knee deep into WWE. I don't have a whole lot of notes, honestly, from them because SmackDown's the only show we've had since our last recording. Um, the only thing I really have, honestly, of note from SmackDown is uh, the fact that they have Los Lotharios out here looking like a poor man's version of Los Guerreros with those stupid fucking tights they're wearing. Yeah. Um, that's really, really the only thing of note that I had. Um, uh, yeah. fucking Rollins dropped Mox's name on fucking Which, on live mic. 
it probably got shit on for it backstage. But other than that, like. Whatever. I don't know. I mean, w, like, WWE is promising some huge forbidden door su- surprise entrant. Which, and, let me, I, I feel like we visited this in episode 33, but let's fucking visit this again real quick. The forbidden door is nothing it. literal. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking made up concept by the IWC to fucking try and blow up and. Really, Dave Meltzer fell into this too. Uh-huh. It's to fucking just blow up the enormity of people showing up in certain places. Right. Forbidden Door is a fucking. It's like the Easter Bunny. All right? <laughs> if you're a child listening to the show, first of all, I hope you got your parents' permission to listen to the show because we curse a lot here. Second of all, um, I'm sorry if I just ruined all your hopes and dreams about the Easter Bunny. It's not him bringing you a basket full of a basket full of candy, a card of cash, and maybe some toys. No, it's your fucking parents. So fuck off. Over the there, bunny. that's just some guy in a suit. I mean, let's be honest. You think the Easter Bunny is going out and putting eggs with coins in them for your fucking Easter egg hunt? I mean, come on, let's be right. If you if you really want so many coins in them. The, the plastic eggs, not actual yeah. eggs, eggs. No, I never not... got coins in my eggs. <laughs> yeah, it's usually, it was, well, for me, it was either coins or you got, or you were lucky enough to find one of the few that had some kind of actual cash in them, not, not coins. Um, I never got cash in my fucking Easter eggs. What'd you get, candy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. well, see, in my house, we actually hid hard-boiled eggs. We didn't hide the fucking, which was o- always a pain in the ass, because when you, there's always one that someone forgot. Yeah, 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 that episode of Bob's Burgers happened once in my life. Oh boy! Oh god! <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's kind of the uh, the uh, you know, Easter's kind of gone to kind of gone to the it's kind of gone to hell in a handbasket itself. Like Rob Williams said, we went from crucifixion, resurrection, and then chocolate bunnies, colored eggs. Um, I can tell you exactly why, but that's a story for another day. Yeah, it's commercialization. It's okay. Um, it's not commercialization, but it's, like I said, well, I, for no I, 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 I'm just fucking around. I know. I um, know. but I mean, think about it this way: Would you rather do chocolate bunnies, colored eggs? Would you rather do a thing where you have a, a parent leading kids around when he's laying down, you know, raspberry or strawberry jam, going, "Come on, kids, let's go find Jesus," and the jam's no, <laughs> the jam is supposed to be. Blood, never mind. Anyways, um, mommy, I found a Lincoln log in me sock drawer. That's the story of Jesus. Yep. Um, any hooser. Um, there wasn't really anything else from SmackDown that caught your eye, was there? Uh, let me see here. Um, aside from the main event that had no meaning whatsoever because we all knew that Owens and Rollins were going to somehow win that match. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you knew it had to be a schmoz because you couldn't make anyone look fucking weak in that. Um, I hope we're not getting just a rehash of the festival of friendship shit between Owens and fucking and, and, and Rollins. Um, can I, say, can I say one thing that does slightly bother me? And this is me being very nitpicky. Yeah. Is it really necessary to add the word freak into his fucking name? Like eh. it has to be Seth freak. Like, like eh, doesn't bother me. It's again. It's just me being nitpicky. This whole thing with Sonya and Naomi doesn't even get a blow off at the Rumble. It's just going to happen on fucking SmackDown next week. Yeah, yeah. Because Rumble's already overbooked, buddy. Yeah, sure it is. Like that couldn't be the pre-show. No, the pre-show is going to be a tag team match. Ugh. I'll like. I'll. I'll. I'll bet money on it. The pre-show. No, actually, no. I'll bet it's going to be one of two things. The pre-show is going to be some kind of tag match. Or it's going to be fucking um, like Ricochet versus Hall- Ridge Holland or some shit. Like Winner just, gets number 30, loser gets number one. Something like that. It's something stupid. Yeah. Um, that's so, yeah, that's the only thing that would make any sense. Yeah. Did I really delete my notes here? Am I that much of an idiot? Hold on. I don't know. Um, and... Uh, I'm okay. So they, because they did the backstage, that was Jarrett showed up and Jarrett talked to Nakamura and Boogs, which was, it was okay for what it was. But people, I'm sick of people complaining about Nakamura hasn't defended the titles this September. Motherfucker, Nakamura defends the Intercontinental title on house shows. 
Like, just because you're not seeing the matches doesn't mean they're not happening. Correct. And, yeah, I guess he's got a he's got an injured hand right now, which is why they haven't had the, the blow-off match between him and Sammy yet. But at the same time, that's why Sammy's getting this little fucking rub with fucking Johnny Knoxville. Because it's something to pass the time until the Rumble. And, and that's Saints, not one of the very few talents that would be able to get Knoxville over like this. Exactly. Plus, you got to figure, if they want to do an Intercontinental title match, and they want to... Do it and they want to do or, or that so here's it here's what i'm thinking uh, they are probably going to do this this match before elimination chamber and have sammy win so that nakamura can go do something else at elimination chamber because we know sammy is never going to be on a saudi arabian show so that's my guess as in they'll do that and then they'll start elevating not Nakamura more towards the main event because they don't have anyone else right now because as that was they had to bring Rollins over from Raw because Drew is hurt and they haven't built anyone else up on SmackDown. So my guess is when Nakamura's hand is healed, they will have him drop the Intercontinental title to Sammy to have him start doing at least a mini feud towards the title for SmackDown. Wouldn't the chamber right now make more sense for the WWE title than for anything other than that? Well, well, first we don't know how many chamber matches there's going to be. I'm guessing, maybe. But I just also... don't know whether the titles are de- would be deemed worthy of that right now because there's, there's. I mean, I, I could be wrong. I don't see any other title that has a program right now that would be deemed worthy enough to have a chamber match other than the WWE title. Well, we also need to see what happens after the Rumble. Because right now, hypothetically, you have Lashley, Lesnar, Mm -hmm. E, Owens, Mm -hmm. Rollins. And then fuck all who the sixth guy is. Who knows? Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That just that like right now on SmackDown, do you even have six guys? Well, five if you include Roman, obviously. I mean, like, who are your five guys? Boogs, Corbin, oh, Boogs, Nakamura, Corbin, uh, <laughs> Kofi, Kofi, Kofi. Yeah. <laughs> like, we've seen this before. I mean, like I said, it's all up in the air. We have to see what happens at the Rumble. Um, my thought on the rumble is going to be how how this the show itself is structured. Okay, well we'll get to the rumble in a second. Actually, no, we're going to do it right now because I don't think I have anything else. Let me double check my notes because I found them again. Um, oh, you don't think there's any way maybe they? Sh- I mean, there might be something going on in the midst of it. You don't think they try recreating because they're going to Dallas? Which is where Nakamura? Well, not that's not where exactly he debuted, but he debuted at San Antonio mm-hmm. with NXT against and Sammy. Sammy Zayn. Yeah, right. I don't know. Just just a thought to put out there for Mania, but that's that's way down the road. We're not even thinking about that yet. Yeah. Um. Oh, one thing we did not talk about yet that we have to before mm-hmm. we get to the Rumble. Uh-huh. So Mustafa Ali requested his release. And they a won't give it to him. Ago, and they won't fucking give it to him. I, what am I missing here? It may be the it may be the reason he wants his release. Like because he keeps Do you saying know like the legit it's, reason? It's, no, because he hasn't said it. Because he said he can't say it until he's free, and so like he's being cryptic about it. But see, at my first guess was that fucking. My guess was when he said it goes beyond me in wrestling that I thought that meant that it was like legit, like I'm just going to go be a stay at home dad or COVID or something like that. Like I figured that would have been the reason. And if that were the reason WWE probably would have gave him his release, just like they gave Tony storm her release. I think if they refused to, then I think word got out that it was probably something like, Danielson's been pushing for Tony Khan to sign him. 
And as such, Vince went, fuck you. But if someone were... I'm trying to think. Even if a talent requests their release, mm-hmm. they would still have a no-compete, I would assume, wouldn't they? Unless nope. WWE comes to them and says, we'll waive nope. it. If you request so your release, that's it. No and void. No and void. Because you're breaking the contract. So you think the wanting to do more is AEW? That's the only thing I can think of because otherwise Vince would have been like, cool, I understand, go. (sighs) But now you under spite contract, motherfucker. That just doesn't make any fucking sense, though. There's already... Mm -hmm. There's 160 people for a 50-person job. I know. If that makes sense. I don't know if that came out right, but you know what I mean. No, but yeah. Um, Tony Khan wants a shiny new toy. Yeah. Uh, Also, and this is just coming across as we're recording, uh, apparently LA Knight and Roderick Strong are backstage for Raw tonight. So there's talk that... It's main event tapings. Right. So there's talk that they... uh, Let me see here. Uh, they were backstage Friday night as well and did a yeah. dark na- a dark match before SmackDown went on the air. So, yeah, they, they're talking about how they were either doing another dark match in front of WWE officials again or they're taping for main event, one or the other. Right. Same Much like to- Dunn and Ciampa had been doing. Exactly. Yeah, because I don't um, see... I'm pretty sure Strong's, Strong's just going to be a coach in NXT. I don't see him doing anything on the main roster. Of course, at the same time, it would be hilarious out of everyone in the fucking Undisputed Era if it was Roderick Strong that was actually the only one that was able to make it to the main roster on a full-time basis. That would be pretty fucking funny. Um, One last thing. Uh, WWE confirmed to the Dallas Morning News today um, that the company is going to have the go home at WrestleMania episode of SmackDown, as well as Mania and the night after Mania Raw, all in Dallas, which I already mentioned last, I think it was last week I mm-hmm. mentioned this. Or no, yeah. two weeks ago, because we were talking about, no, it was during, it was sometime during episode 32 when we were talking about the scheduling of all the indie events around Mania weekend and comparing it to the right. Mania weekend calendar with WWE. Right. But they also confirmed. Obviously, the Hall of Fame ceremony that week. Uh And an NXT TakeOver event will be held in Dallas that week. Thank God. Of course. No. Why do they have to wait to have NXT Greenhorn Central be the fucking shit? No. That's exactly the reaction I was expecting out of you. So great. So Dallas gets to see Gunter do the fucking job to Braun Breaker. The most dominant fucking champ they've had in the past fucking eight years. Sorry. I'm going to do the job to Braun Breaker in 10 minutes. Sorry, JJ. So that being said, we now get to It's the Royal Rumble. That actually didn't sound half bad. That was pretty good. Um, (laughs) All right. So Rumble. First off, let's begin with scratches, as they say in sports. Or we can just call them the injured. Sasha Banks injured like about a month ago now, I think it's been. I think it was around Christmas-ish she she got hurt. She's not going to be back in time. Bailey, question mark, only because it's been teased a lot, feeling. but she also hasn't been medically cleared yet from what I understand. Um, Woods got hurt a couple weeks ago. He's out for Rumble. And then McIntyre, we haven't heard from since day one. Could be a surprise well, entry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, but we're not. Is it, a, is it a real neck thing or was it a neck thing? 
Like, Apparently, it's been a nagging neck injury. Okay, so it really is going to depend on how how that happens. Also, we learned because you know they just had to throw their fucking names into the fire. The artist woman known as Peyton Royce and uh, fuck all. What was her WWE name? The other one, uh, Billy Kay. Billy Kay. They apparently turned down an offer from WWE to be in the Royal Rumble because I'm sure they sure they reached out to them. Sure they did. Yeah, I believe that um, as much as Britt Baker saying that she got offered a contract by WWE. Right. Um, so here are your non-Rumble matches that are booked right now. Only four of them. Again, there will probably be a match or two on the pre-show as well, but these are the official ones. Um, right now, they are the It Couple versus the Grit Couple, Ms. Maurice against Edge and Beth Phoenix. Mm-hmm. The Raw Women's title, Becky Lynch defending against Dewdrop. The Mm -hmm. WWE title match with Lesnar defending against Lashley. Mm -hmm. And then the Universal title with Roman defending against Seth and the Usos being banned from ringside as per the schmas from the end of SmackDown this past week um, with the Usos and Owens and Rollins. So that's that. My assumption... My assumption is all three champions retain, and I'm gonna guess Miz and Maurice win just to even things up. If I, you think they just kill the program right this away? This is the blow off. This, this is, is the blow so? off. Yeah. yeah, maybe. This well, you is don't the think blow Ed, off. They don't want. You don't think Edge wants to go to Chamber and have another match with Miz? If Edge sticks around for Chamber, he'll be in. A chamber match. He's not going. Don't worry. You know mm. why he's not going? He didn't want to go to the first Saudi show. Um. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't want to be at the fucking Saudi show he was at the first time around. So. Um. Yeah. All right. So let's dive into the women's rumble. Now yeah. I don't think there's been any additional entrance named. There haven't. In the last like couple weeks, honestly. So here's the list I have right now. Uh-huh. Rhea, Nikki, the Bella Twins, Shotzi, Natalia, Michelle McCool, Dana Brooke, Carmela and Zelina, Mickey James, Tamina, Kelly Kelly, Aaliyah, Summer Ray, Naomi, Shayna, Lita, Charlotte, um, I want to say Liv Morgan yeah. has declared. Yes, yeah, she um, did. Dewdrop, obviously not because she's in the... Well, not obviously not, but I Bianca was Bianca did not, too. Um, all right, Bianca. I did mention... I did miss Bianca. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, we don't know what assuming does. Makes an ass out of you and me. But I'm going to kind of assume Alexa returns at the Rumble officially. Yeah, yeah. That would be my assumption. And yeah. by the way, they've they've trademarked the goddess for her. Did you hear that? Oh. They trademarked that phrase, the goddess Maybe they're, for her. Well, I mean, because is, she was doing that was shit. Was that way her back NXT thing? A little bit, yeah. So they might be doing like a Jekyll and Hyde shit with her. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking a little bit. Because that's kind of what they've been alluding to, really, with these vignettes is very like, like only certain things trigger her. Yeah. So, um, so I believe that gives us somewhere around 20, 1, 2, 4, 6, 21, 8, 10, 11, 15, 18, 19, 20, 22, excuse 22, me. 22. And that's assuming Alexa is in. That's 22. Right. Um, so we've got room for surprises still. I'm going to also go on the limb here because Naomi's in the rumble. I'm going to go on the limb and say, a severe exercising of her power, Sonya Deville's probably going to be in the Rumble. Yeah. So that makes 23. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, that now opens the door for other people. Um, I'm pretty sure Raquel's going to show up. I was going to say, I'm going to guess I'll write down Raquel, so that's 24. They'll probably put in Mandy Rose just to get her showing, because... Because Mickey James is coming out with the Impact Women's Championship. So they'll have Mandy Rose there come out with the NXT Championship. They already have Charlotte in there. 
And? She's a SmackDown Women's Champion. And? Do you really need Mandy Rose in that case for that You don't need her, but they'll probably fucking put her in there. Because Bruce Pritchard. I'll fucking write her down. So that leaves five. That's 25, assuming those three are in. Sonya, Raquel, and Mandy Rose. That puts us at 25. Obviously, the IWC wants to believe that Trish is a rumored entrant that will show up. That'd be and, nice. And the IWC has a huge fucking hard on for Paige coming back. Yeah. I, I, I don't see it. I'm sorry. I, I don't fucking see it. Hmm. Um, see. I'm trying to think of people who have regularly been coming back, kind of, sort of. Molly Holly would be one. Yeah. Um, who else has been regularly coming back? Tori Wilson. Yeah, but I mean, she's been there the past couple of rumbles. Right. Well, I'm just saying, like, Asuka. Right, Asuka. We, yeah, Asuka. Well, I'll put Asuka as a question mark. Um. Also, because like I, I mentioned during the injury update before we went through this, Bailey, it's like maybe, maybe not. There's no clear, defined yes or no on her yet. Right. Um. So I'll put her as a question mark. I can't really think of. Do I not have Shayna Baszler on here? By the way. No, you said Shayna Baszler. I did say Shayna. Okay, I said her. Yeah, that's right. I didn't say her full name. Um, I just can't think of. First off, I can't think of anyone from NXT that really would be worth putting in there at this point. Right, Except, like actually, Cora Jade would embarrass herself. I'll I'll name one, and it's the only one. Kaylee Ray, maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's the only one I would even trust out of that crew. Yeah, yeah. Um, because the rest of the, actually, it, it, fuck, I, I, I'm only mentioning this name because of her back, her athletic background, and I don't think she's done a rumble before. Casey Cat and Zero. Yeah, because they they're gonna need a like they're gonna need someone besides Naomi to do the 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 Kofi spot, right? Which they kind of had with Bianca last year. Uh, what was it? Bianca and Rhea, I think, did a spot. Kind of. Oh no, it was Bianca yeah. and Naomi. Yeah, I think actually, no, Bianca had two spots. One with Naomi, one with Rhea. I think it was. Yeah. Um. So maybe, maybe, uh, KLR, maybe, uh, Cat and Zero. Yeah. Otherwise, that's that. Um. Yeah. But just going and based now, off of who we know for a fact, who, what do you think are the legitimate viable options at this point for this match? See, this is where you got it really analytical. I think what's intriguing um, is that SmackDown has gone deep dive every week to mention if Charlotte wins, she's not going to be picking a champion. She's going to be picking hand picking her challenger for her title at WrestleMania, which makes me think it's more possible than not that she might be the one. I'm not I'm not picking her as, as the winner. Yeah. But they're really fucking giving the hard sell on that being an option. Right. Well, it's because they're doing the same thing they did when Brock entered with the title. This is where uh, this is where my concern comes in, and also where it is. Um, depends on where it takes place on the card and what the outcome is. If the usually, I mean, except for the first year, the women's rumble usually goes on first. It went on last the first year because of just the fact that it was the first time they did a women's rumble. If the women's rumble goes on first and Charlotte wins it, 
the fix is in that they're unifying both world titles at Mania. It's going to spoil the rest of the fucking evening. Right. We've we we mentioned that last week as well. Right. I was just reiterating. Um, oh no, I agree. If the women's rumble, yeah, if the women's rumble goes on after the men's rumble, then we really got to consider what's going on. But I don't see that ha- happening. Um, I would say if Charlotte doesn't win it, um, I mean, it feels like they're trying to push for Lita and Charlotte, but I'd be worried about that because of Lita. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to put the title on her. Although here's what's interesting. I'm not sure if you saw this over the last few days, but um, word has come out since her appearance, not this past week, the week before that on SmackDown, that Mm -hmm. Lita has some kind of like X number of matches, like a Brock Lesnar type contract as far as like X number of bookings, which... Oh my fucking god! They're gonna put the title on Lita. If it, if that's come out, they're gonna fucking Lita's gonna win that rumble. Like I'm gonna to double save check her him. from having to take a fucking heavy bump. I'm gonna make sure I saw that right. Training video. One more one left. I can't remember where the fuck I saw it, but I know I saw an article that mentioned that. She said she has one more run left. We, yeah, of course, anybody would fucking say that. Oh, Jesus. What? Did you know that apparently AEW reached out to Lita about doing an angle with Britt Baker yeah. last year? Uh huh. Oh, God. And she said, fuck you, I don't want to be in the same building as Matt and Punk. (laughs) So, I just, I don't like it. I don't like that at all. I don't either, but at least it's not unifying the fucking belts. So, hypothetically... Mm -hmm. Let's say Charlotte's not winning. Okay. And they're not going down the road of. They're not going down that road. We don't want them to go down with Lita. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw out names that I think are legitimate contenders. Mm -hmm. You say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. Top of my list, Rhea Ripley. Yes. To make up for the bullshit last year. Um. I'm not saying it's a, a viable option, but it's a wild card option because who the fuck knows they, what they want to do with this? What about Mickey James against Charlotte at Mania? If they're going to keep an open talk, then sure. Like, that's... I think that makes slightly more sense than Mickey Becky. Yeah. Um, so I'd say that's the big wild card in the whole thing. Um, mm-hmm. I say you can never rule out them picking Alexa Bliss because yeah, it's Alexa. Because um, she has because she never really got the big blow off of Charlotte. They had the one match and correct. She needs revenge um, still. I'm not saying I would pick her, but just the way they've been booking her heavily the last few months. And I said this last week and you hated me for it, but it's honesty. You can't definitively rule out Liv Morgan yet. You, you can't. Uh, I know. I don't like it either, but you can't rule out Liv as an option. Um, Bianca obviously is an option, but I don't think they would have her be the first person to win back to back. I just, eh. Right. Yeah. I don't, plus, I don't know if they'll ever go that route again. I don't think they'll ever let somebody do back to back again. Yeah, having Austin do it was a different era, different situation. Right. Let alone three out of four. Jesus Christ. Um, right. What else? Um, actually, no, it was three out of five. 
right? Yeah, yeah three out of five. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it was 97, 98. 99 was when Vince threw him out at the end. Mm-hmm. 2000 was The Rock? Yeah, Rock and so. Big Show, wasn't it? Wasn't it when Rock and Big mm-hmm. Show had the schmas? Right. Yeah. And then 01 was Austin again. Because, yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, if these two are returning, I'd say Asuka and Bailey are also legitimate options. Yes. If I had especially to... Because, especially because they can play off the whole... Asuka did her first clean job to Charlotte at Mania. Right. Assuming that she comes back at, at Rumble and comes into the match, Asuka would be my number one pick. Yeah. Going based on those announced entrants right now, I would probably go Rhea Ripley as my prediction. Yeah. yeah. Um, But then the question also becomes, do they... How much do they want to invest into Rhea and Nikki? Do they invest to the point where one costs the other and then something happens to the other one at some point? Like, because you also have to wait, you have to wait in the current programs too. Or they just, but at the same time, Raw is tonight and maybe they just shut that shit down tonight. Who right, knows? exactly. Um, so I'd go with Rhea. Obviously, if Asuka's in it, then that changes everything in that match. Mm hmm. Um, the men again, I haven't, I, I, I must be either I'm missing shit or they really haven't announced there's, anyone. No, they really, there's only like, there's like fucking like 12, a 13 dozen spots maybe? open. Cause yeah. I got the names I have are Dom and Ray, Seamus. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I want to say Ridge Holland is in the match too, isn't he? I'm pretty sure maybe? I've seen Holland. I'm pretty sure I've seen Holland in the. Uh, the graphic. I'm not positive. Okay. Um, Johnny Knoxville, the Street Profits, mm-hmm. Austin Theory, mm-hmm. AJ Styles, Damian Priest, and Big E, which is 11. And Sami Zayn. All oh, right, Sami. So yeah, that's 12. Um, I know Sean Waltman's had a hard on for possibly being a Rumble entrant. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I don't fucking know. It's not that I don't want it. It's just I don't know. Um, I mean, it's the nostalgia pop fucking spot. Oh, we have to add Kevin Owens. I forgot he declared yep. for the Rumble. Uh, uh-huh. Kofi Kingston is in the Rumble. I forgot about that. That's 14. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, we have Moss and Corbin. That's 16. Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Because I'm looking at the graphic right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Who do I have in here that's not in the graphic? Three, six. Austin nine. Theory. Austin Theory said he's in. Yeah, I have him, and he's in the graphic too. Oh, do we have Balor? What the fuck? Hold on. I. <laughs> ha! Okay, I want to make sure I get this straight. One of your biggest stars of the last five years has declared that he's in the Rumble match, but you don't have him in the fucking graphic. AJ Styles is not in the fucking graphic for the match. Interesting. They have. Oh, and you know, else. fuck. You know, fucking Giant Gonzalez is in there then. They put everybody that I just named on this graphic except AJ Styles, who I know, and they Gee, even have a list who's not winning? Fucking... AJ Styles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which sucks because I was one of the guys I was leaning on. Nope. Yeah, they they even have AJ listed in the the superstars in the article on WWE.com. They have him listed in the guys who have declared for the match, but they don't have him in the fucking graphic. Yeah. But yeah, Eight, you nine, figure 10, 11, Austin Theory and uh, Balor. You figure Omos will be in it. Apollo Cruz will probably be in there. Now, who do I... Oh, they don't have Ridge Holland listed here. Okay, so Ridge okay. Holland... Did I miss Styles then? Oh, I missed Styles. Okay. Oh, <laughs> he is in the graphic. Oh, my apologies. Ah. Okay. So, it's Holland that's not in the graphic. Okay, my bad. So Holland might not be in it. They might just be like, you're not ready. Uh, yeah. Okay. Apparently, so fucking... Right. Apparently, fucking Braun Breaker showing up for it. So, who did you just say? You just said Omos... Omas, Apollo, Finn, Finn Apollo. Apollo. 
Uh, you think Aziz would be just a filler in there? I don't think they'll put him in. All right, so we'll put Holland as a question mark right now. I won't even put Aziz on this list. Mm-hmm. So 15, 16. So that's, eight, that's 18 assumptions here. I'll put a question mark for Braun. He's been in the graphic. I mean, in the in the commercial. That's why. Oh, suck a dick. Yeah. Man, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So we have 18 assumed slash confirmed plus Braun Breaker, Ridge Holland, and I've got Sean Waltman as a question mark just because. Uh-huh. So what does that leave open? That leaves a lot of options. Oh, you know what the pre-show is probably going to be? Fucking Viking Raiders and the Usos for the tag titles because the Viking Raiders are the number one contenders. That, okay. That would make sense, yeah. So you'll probably put Ricochet in the fucking Rumble. Okay. Um, I'll write him down. What about Rick Boogs? Him or Nakamura. I could see either of them. I'll put just Boogs for now because I don't because Nakamura still might be hurt. That's that's why I'll put I'll write down Nakamura, but I'll put him as a question mark. Yeah. Uh, Shin. All right. So that pretty much. And we're gonna get we're gonna get a surprise from either Impact or Ring of Honor or someone. We're gonna get that surprise. Plus, you have to assume there's gonna be at least one. All right, let me ask you this question. I know they wanted to cut that on NXT, guys. How many you think are actually in the men's match? If any. Braun, and that's it. Maybe LA Knight. Or Strong. Can Maybe. I throw out a hypothetical there? Or Ciampa, just to give him the one. Can I throw sure. another hypothetical? Yeah. No, Ciampa was in one, wasn't he? Was he? I don't remember. Oh, they might put t- fucking stupid-ass Grayson Waller in there. Not who I was thinking, but viable. Oh. Viable. Not who I was thinking. Um, and I think wasn't Ch- when they were doing the whole thing with him as NXT champ and Johnny as the as the North American champ. Weren't they both in the Rumble that one year? No, because that was Mania season. I could have swore Ciampa was in a because Rumble. that was remember they had him on Raw that once and then Ciampa got hurt. I had to vacate the belt. Let me see here. I could have swore he was in a, a, a Royal Rumble. I could be wrong, though. Let me see here. Uh, DIY championships. Uh, War Games defended the title in Phoenix. Yeah, you're right. He didn't. Yeah, because he was hurt. Why do I think? Why did I think he was in the Royal Rumble one year? Because it was just there was that uh, during like. When they were trying to get more eyes on NXT, they had they had the guys showing up on fucking Raw and shit, right? Like during the whole fucking uh, leading up to Survivor Series and then around the Mania block, like. But yeah, he they never really, got they, he never got a fair they, shake. They really were gonna call up Johnny and Tommaso when he got hurt, huh? Yeah. Oh, Gunter. They might bring Gunter up. You had to. You just wanted to say the name. Just be honest, Gunta. That's the only reason you're fucking saying it. You just want to say the name. But that's that's. I'm gonna call him Walter. Walter. I'm gonna call him Walter. That's not even. That's not even the fucking name I was thinking. Uh, I got one more name out there. Oh, I'll give you a hint. He hasn't been on TV in a couple months. Okay. Uh... And we're on the topic of NXT. Come on, come on. He gonna be a daddy. Oh, Gargano. Yeah, I just would love sake, it. Just for the sake I of hey, you haven't that. been on TV in a while. Why don't you shake off the ring rust a little bit here? I would love it. it I w- it would. It would bring me. It would bring a smile to my face. I don't see it happening. That's unfortunate because I'll be. He's I a free agent. He can do what he wants. He obviously hasn't shown up on fucking AEW. Come get a payday. It would be nice. Come get a payday. It's not that far from Cleveland. It's only St. Louis. Come on. Come on. I mean, they, 
they could be bringing they could be bringing in a couple of people just for a fucking two week contract like they did to Carlito last year. Remember? Mm, true. True. All so right, so let's be get some into- like callback of like the, someone that no one cares about, like fucking Rob Conway or some shit. Oh, God Almighty, Jesus. Um. All right, so who is a legitimate option at this point? It all depends. It all depends on the placement of the match on the show. Could I just say the one name I know we both don't want winning? Yeah. But I've got this really awkward feeling about it a little bit, and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Please don't, please, please, please don't let it be punishment Martinez. I mean, Damian Priest, please, please, nope. please, nope. please don't. He's not ready for it. He's, He's not ready for I it. Know. I know. I know. They're trying everything they can to give him the rub, and he's still getting mixed reactions from crowds. That's my point. They're trying. I just want them to try too hard. They're trying because he's fucking six foot eight and can speak Spanish. I know. That's what I'm saying. Don't Vince will get it. tired of him quick enough. Vince will get tired of him quick enough. All right. Legitimate options. I know you don't think it is. I'm still going to say AJ's a legitimate option. Eh. Um, I don't think Theory's ready yet, but he no. will be in a few years. Yeah. Uh, Big E is a legitimate option, I'd say. He is. Um, I could see a weird way where maybe KO's an option, potentially. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Finn, maybe? It would be nice. Um, Shin's already won, so if he's in there, he's not gonna win. Mm-hmm. I but uh, Shin also didn't get the victory at Mania. That's the thing you have to consider about Royal Rumble winners: is there's guys who have won and then gone on to Mania and won it all. Then there's guys who have won the Rumble but went to Mania and fizzled out. Like, uh, not sure if you remember who this would be. Not Tony D'Angelo, the original, this guy. When the fuck did Vito win the Royal Rumble? No, 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 no. The Spanish version of this. Oh, fuck him. Yeah. (laughs) It is my destiny. Yeah. Destiny to be a child trafficker. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't know that, that that's how we're going to bring up El Belter Del Rio today, but okay, sure. Um, <laughs> the original Burberry scarf guy. Um, hmm. Anyways, um, there's a guy I have a bad feeling about, too. Not a bad feeling about, but I have a feeling about, although he has been kind of buried the last few weeks with, he's been buried the last few weeks on SmackDown, because he's been bogged down with a horrible act. I uh, what? Could they ever go with Kofi over Big E? No. Thank you. I was hoping you'd see that. Thank you. Okay. That that makes me feel better. Appreciate it. Thank you. Kofi had his run, and then they had the whole fucking trying to rehash it and realize, you know something? This never worked the first time. So, yeah, no. Who do I want to make? Oh, you never made a pick for the Women's Rumble. Who's your pick? I know, I don't it, know. Depends on, it depends on where the match is on the card. But this, just, is one of the, this is one of the pay-per-views where I can't give you a pick. I can't give you any. I can't. This is the most uncertain WWE premium live event that I can recall. In years, you really just called the every smack the shit out. Of yes, you. I did. Because yeah. Michael Cole it's, said it like six times on SmackDown. I want to break my TV because everything went to shit at day one. I don't know how anything's going to turn out. I'm literally, I don't, I don't, I don't know, and I can't make a definitive pick on anything. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to call it right now. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on my fucking pedestal. You know, this isn't as distant a prediction as when I made the prediction for this guy to win Money in the Bank last year. Six weeks out of it happening, I'm calling Big E to win the Rumble. Okay. 
that's to me it's him or there's one other guy. I think it's him or Finn, honestly. Because Finn's been just See, here's my Finn's just been quiet enough where him winning would kind of shock the system a little bit and be like, oh, oh, yeah, oh. it would be nice. Here's my issue. Depends on the place. If the ma- if the if the men's rumble match happens at the end of the night instead of before Lashley Lesnar or before Roman Seth, something's gonna happen where and like I said, it all depends on the women's rumble. Mm-hmm. But I could also see Lesnar getting screwed by Lashley. Or Lesnar getting screwed and Lashley going over Lesnar and then Lesnar popping up in the fucking Rumble and winning the thing. No. No. Or I could see Roman getting screwed by Paul Heyman or something and then Roman showing up in the Rumble and winning. That's the issue I have. That's the issue I have. It has to happen before Lashner Leslie. Lashner Leslie. <laughs> wow. Before, wow. <laughs> before Lashley Lesnar. If it happens Woo. before that match, we're kind of safe. But if Charlotte wins a women's rumble, the fix is in and fucking, it doesn't matter who wins the men's rumble. Cause they're unifying those fucking belts, which I don't want. I don't think anyone wants. The only person that wants that is Jim Cornette. That's true. That's very true. Like, I understand the significance of having brand champion. Right. Especially considering I don't think Fox would want to share a champion with anyone. Exactly. That being said, uh, anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Alexander? So should I tell the story this week? Which story? The story that I never get to. The NEW story? Yes. It's up to you. Can you give me a moment to grab a drink? I have an idea. (laughs) I have an idea. What's that? How about... Just because we're almost three hours deep already. Okay. How about I will make sure I set aside a half hour block next show. Okay. Fair and enough. we will go that because then that'll allow me to ask questions along the way. If okay. need be for clarification purposes. All right. Sound like a deal? Yes. Okay. Anything else, sir? I think that's it. All right. Well, that being said, episode 34 is now complete. We appreciate you tuning in to White Heat, presented by Godzilla Media, and of course, sponsored by our good friends over at Mohawk Honda in Glenville and Johnstone Supply in Troy. You can catch JJ Alexander on Twitter at JJ underscore Alexander. You can catch me on Twitter at Brian Katie, all one word. For JJ, I'm Brian. Enjoy yourself. Happy Rumble season. We'll catch you on episode 35 next time. Till yeah. then. Till then. Goodbye. <laughs>